Diagonal Crouch, 269. However, the only set of two eyeballs that are going sideways are a certain Spark fan's uh, eyes when they see the placement. Hello, Kenobi! Welcome to the wow. show! Wow, what, what an intro. Thank you so much. Dude. You're welcome, what a, you're what welcome. What an absolutely fantastic <laughs> intro. Of course, I had to be back here to gloat about the Spark at some point. but it, it, It's true. I don't, think, I don't think you would have let me not uh, no, I put this. No. I, there was like a number of times he's just like elbowing me in the stands like, hey. <laughs> So, uh, when are we, spark pick? how about, how about them spark, pick? <laughs> spark six? I don't know. How, how did you feel like standing and predicting all that is bad in the world and making it come? <laughs> I, come I, I just, I mean, it's, it's hard to be burdened with this amount of knowledge about right. the Chinese overwatch region. So mm. like, you know, I just, it's a burden I have to bear and you know, sometimes I'm wrong, sometimes I'm right. And that's just kind of how it goes. It's true. It's true. I think you spoke it into existence. I think you need to be very careful with, uh, you know, the, you know, the, the holidays, the, a certain holiday kind of, you know, uh, being out of season, you know, the, uh, the, the galactic ley lines or the, the barrier between reality, maybe, uh, uh still a little thin. So be careful with, uh, that kind of power, great power, great responsibility, something like that. Star Wars, Spider-Man, well, whoever the fuck said it. I think that was, the ah, don't worry about it. Anyways. Um, yeah, so we're here, 269. Um, how do we like playoffs before we get into some big topics? I know that there's some roster moves out there. I know we have a new hero, apparently, to talk about. Um, but I think first things first, uh, finals. Yay, nay. How do we like it? Butterfingers, huh? B Butterfing best fun. I think one of the coolest things is that, like, uh, honestly, side t tangentially, the, the, uh, uh -huh. the Butterfinger thing was really, really fun. Like in, when they were chanting like Butterfinger and it became the loudest chant, like I thought that was just yeah. really cute. And uh, I wonder at like some point if we're going to get like a Butterfinger skin. I saw like concept art for it and I was like, that, <laughs> you know, I'd, I'd be so down for something like that. But uh, overall, going back to the grand finals, obviously, I think you probably have to say this was the best grand finals we've ever had. At least for Overwatch League end of season finals. I don't think mm -hmm. it's the best series because I think. No. The best series is uh, Paris Fusion during the Genji meta. For like sure. me, that's like the where I would like rank one. But it's very close, I think, um, mm -hmm. between both of these. And after all, like the really pretty awful grand finals we've had going into this one, it was nice to like have one where it was like, ah, like this is like very close. We don't know who's going to win like immediately. It's going all seven. Um, and so that was really nice. And I think the quality of play was also very good between all the teams so mm. i think that definitely the best grand finals we've had for an overwatch league season at the end uh and definitely what i would say is probably on mount rushmore for like greatest overwatch series of all time sure i know that you know kenobi and i were you know uh, uh, on scene in the in the arena so i think on our, the ground our, yeah we're on the ground you know <laughs> uh but how is like the the online viewership yes was it you know did the did the butterfinger chance come through was it did it feel as like anti-marketing success as, as it felt like it was in the arena? Because I feel like a lot of people took it and kind of ran with it. And they seem to have some fun with it at the very least. Yeah, I think like there was a lot of interest into the technology there. Because like I don't know if you guys could see it on the big screen, but it was a little wobbly, you know. It's we like saw that, it. that yeah, yeah, we 4D saw thing. The, like the, Yeah. Yeah, I, I still I think that's that's the future. Uh, it should have. I think it happened in CDL already a little bit before. I think realistically, it's in League Two. I think. Yeah, yeah I, it yeah, should yeah. just be part of the map. If we're being honest, right? Yes, like eventually, yes. that should just be the case. And um, but yeah, for now, like I, I, this, this was of course like a good sign. I don't know that much about Butterfinger. I don't think they're available in Germany either. Um, but not great. They're they're not, pretty mid. Yeah. They just get stuck in your teeth. They right. are. Really I mean, they're fantastic. Teeth. Shout outs, Butterfinger in the Overwatch League. Uh, continue to give us your money. <laughs> I would say, like, you, got, you guys know the Discord, you know, viewership experience. I wouldn't dare to, like, you know, lie to you guys and say that this stream was ever unmuted. But other than during the grand final, I would say. Um, but the, the, yeah, I don't know. Like, I think generally speaking, it was a final. It was nice to be back. Uh, sure. Definitely, some questions about the the content. I guess let me, let me ask you this guy, you you guys this because in my mind, 
a lot of that content was just like, okay, let's do something fun for the audience and the audience then will carry the, uh, sorry, the live audience. And then the reaction of the live audience yeah. will then carry the atmosphere onto the stream and that's the best we can do here. Yes. How, I did like... Is it, oh, go ahead. Re real quick. How, for instance, did something like... How was the hero dances or the um, the translators? How were they? Sorry, sorry translator. Um, like the the voice actors. How were they received these these interviews and these like non esportsy but like yeah. type of activation yeah. things? I think a lot of that stuff. Um, the the voice actor interview I think stands kind of separated from um, the like in, in person yeah. like vamp fill activity to kind of keep people engaged i don't know that that's necessarily something that i would like to see pushed to broadcast a lot of the time i'd like to see more of like prepared video content be used in place of that because I, what i think that does and i hate that we're getting you know too deep in the weeds with this but i think what that's for is just to keep the live audience like entertained and like yes, the energy up but like <clears throat> yeah it's not necessarily for the you know the viewership like the viewership doesn't care about you know it, it's funny to see like oh they're doing the, the cabbage patch and like he's doing the carlton wow cool funny <laughs> or they're doing push-ups crazy like we're doing the wave for 10 minutes you know? <laughs> yeah so it, I, I think it's literally just to keep like people you know uh excited to, to keep people engaged that's just the live audience <clears throat> yeah I, th I think for that type of content makes perfect sense for me for a live audience yeah. i was a little disappointed that we didn't get more dope stuff um sure i mean I, I, let's be honest like being an overwatch fan in 2022 despite overwatch 2 coming out still in terms of esports content feels like you're the child it's outside the toy store pressing <sighs> their nose yeah. against the the glass right yeah. like going like i don't know if you guys just saw it like, just came out like two hours ago it's like a trailer with um melon jazzy from c9 white and they're talking mm -hmm. to Baby Bay, and they're doing like car they're car drifting drifts. or something. Yeah, yeah. Like that's for game changers, right? Yeah. Like that that type of production. Right? I just would love to see that back because it had s season one uh, Overwatch yes. League vibes. I like I saw that video and I was like, I know that that movie concept. It's the Seagull movie, yeah. uh, <laughs> like or video, right? So yeah. I I'd love to see stuff like that back. I would even go. I'm 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 currently debating, and I'm a bunch. I'm asking around a bunch of people involved, mm. um, and maybe uh, it's also very possible that I'm just personally out of touch um, with what fan bases want. But in my yeah. mind, I feel like we're now in a place. Watch two is probably within the upper quartile of what we could have expected it to hit. Thirty-five million uh, players. The like game sure. plays well. We knew it wasn't going to, you know, be super extensive, but like we're keeping up with the schedule. Yeah, there's some some moaning about the monetization, or whatever. But like in in the grand scheme of things, I think we're we're living in one of the better realities of how this could have gone. So the game is figured out. Um, we're having the live viewerships boosted by the viewership incentives and everything. The game has now stopped being our bo bottleneck. It's no longer about the game. It's now. Now the bottleneck for me is the content we put on the broadcast. And sure. that's a half-baked take. I, I got to collect a little bit more uh, opinions. But that's basically like where my gut feeling is. And it's totally... Po Dude, I'm a 35-year-old motherfucker that has been in esports way too long and goes like, oh, the, like it tries to find inspiration in, in, the, in the story. And that's probably not what people watch esports for anymore. So maybe I'm wildly out of touch and they're, they're definitely different esports concepts but i think um generally speaking it's it, it, i i think we can we can ramp it up i hope you we, we get this is of course not a, you know like a criticism towards the talent that is working there oh, no. it's it's okay. a resource thing right like a re allocation and a, a strategy thing um but yeah i i wish we not just started doing that type of broadcast content, I just hope our broadcast po uh, product also starts pushing the envelope again in, in some ways, right? Sure. Let's say, yeah. like, if we, we were to come back to Twitch, man, do I want a command center back, for instance, right? Oh, yeah. I love command center. So good.
Um, I think, I think, <clears throat> like, I, I can't help but feel like I watching the proper first person POV. Even while no, dude, you guys know how much I hate spoilers and how much it ruins the series. Sure. Yeah. I was like, when I watched the POV of proper, I was like, I was, I was re, reliving, not reliving. No, I, I was experiencing something new, a new viewership experience right. of that grand final. And that's such a unique experience. I, I feel like that's the way Overwatch should be. Like where, uh, in, in some ways, it almost feels like we're, we're a BR where you want the first yep. person um, yeah. over the third, I, you know you will probably hate this Kenobi because like at best you are then the co-stream caster that goes like, I'm yeah, the yeah, DPS yeah. caster. Maybe I switch between yeah, DPS. No. Right? That's, that's, no. I, need my, I need my free cam a little bit in my third person. For sure. To make it work. Yeah, and I mean, <laughs> there's also a world where, you know, Joe and I probably would fucking love just having a third person, uh, sorry, like a top down, you know, just like top down, top down yeah. like well, never see FPS. Did they have that in Command Center? I remember. Or yeah, yeah, they did. Top down. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that's that's. I think like that would be interesting, especially like if you have different characters that you know to portray that, and maybe you have some infighting between the DPS chats and like the the macro brains, and you know like the, what what they all deem to be sure. very important and whatnot. I think that would be interesting. That would be something that could be pushing the envelope a little bit. But yeah, I think overall, um, I mean, Jesus Christ, like. Just a massive improvement. Um, like er Eric, uh, I'll bring it up in a second. But like our viewership is, of course, the biggest it has ever been. Actually, like, and this is just esports charts. So this is just Western audiences. We have to assume like the Eastern audiences were also big. Um, this is another thing. Like Overwatch is back high up in the PC banks, uh, Korea. That's positive. Biggest, yep. biggest grand finals ever, most watched playoffs ever. Um, of course, there's always some chicanery with like the AMA numbers, and depending on how long your playoffs were. I think this time around they were just regular length. I don't think there was anything that elongated the broadcast time. Um, so yep. that's that's that counts. Like I think that's mm -hmm. legitimately not fudging or anything. The only thing that, of course, like the elephant in the room is like how many of those people were actively watching, not just like idling for skins. Sure. Then again, like don't get off my back because that's every esport now. Yeah, everybody does this. Yeah, this is not new. Incentives. It's not like a just an Overwatch thing. No, this is not an us problem. Props wasn't a, this is like this a, is an esports problem. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, no. But from the online experience, like there's nothing much to complain, but there's also yeah. wasn't that much to pog about other than the grand final. All right. Did you park at anything in the venue? What, what, like, what, what was the atmosphere like? What, what was it like being in the venue? Very good. I thought it was pretty good. Uh, I think that like when I was in there, mm -hmm. day one was like it was Thursday in the afternoon. Like it, it wasn't as full. Friday though was like, um, I think the arena was pretty much all full. Joe, I if I remember. Friday. Not, like, the yeah, for the last day. Uh mostly full i would say i would say it was at least at least 90 percent capacity yeah like there's there's some like upper upper seats that weren't you know necessarily filled yeah but like anybody like near if you could like see the ground then like you were probably like there was yeah. a, there was a butt in that seat like very dense um throughout the entire arena just the the upper seats probably a little, and i little think bit that sparse. like especially for me as a caster whenever i hear crowds cheer for like anything it's just like dopamine hit like it's mm. it's just there's like nothing comparative to it um so for me it was like just hearing that was probably like one of the best things and like in toronto it was kind of similar mm. um because i went to that one as well but this one was like the thing about toronto that was different was toronto was like a home venue yeah. thing and this was like every time something big happened no matter the team like they were here which I think is is nice usually. Like I think that that's um, good for like a final like this where it is, you know, a national event or like not a national but like a global type event event where everyone's just there to like watch good Overwatch. And we did have a lot of good Overwatch. Say whatever you want about the meta. I thought that it was at least in the grand finals getting those seven maps. I think was very good. Mm. The atmosphere was great. Uh, and I think that the it was a really good experience for me, and I was really glad that I won. Yeah. 
How it was definitely I, I wanna echo a lot of those same sentiments. And before we get a little bit too far into the playoffs, I do want to give a proper introduction to the show. So this is episode two sixty nine. Brought to you by our fabulous patron producers, Avril Vista Bebe, Battle Crab, Brief and Bean, Bronze Mob, Buhau, Picasso, Chris R34444, Fashion 67, Lil Shin, Pork Chop, Pork Chop Sammy, Rex Zane, Stuck in Bronze, and our YouTube members, I Sam Jello, William Jess, Fishman, Fire Element 6, AK, Chris R, Brother, Stuck in Bronze, Samuel Spaza, Adam L, and Sagi Fumi. All right, continue with the playoffs. Uh, like, one question I had was about the meta and how it was perceived, because... Once again, this is my this is my old chestnut. Okay, I'm I'm going to bring it out once again. Atlantic Showdown goats. Audience debated by Shatters because Shatter hits, it hits right, a big yeah. one. The Lucio ult comes in, saves everyone. It was like, oh my god! First, like big Shatter, Pog. Oh no, Lucio beat. Oh, and <laughs> then down the line because you had to beat the Shatter. That's actually still a good play. The yeah. The payoff is just delayed, and that's not great. The de- great dopamine uh, mechanism. Here, I felt, and you may think whatever you think about Sojourn, and she was fucking ridiculous, right? Oh, yeah. I feel like theoretically speaking, if the the observers were first person on the Sojourn, that must have been Pog because, yeah, actually the correlation of that Sojourn hitting a headshot and actually team fight outcomes is super high that's one of the yes. most obvious like metas we've ever had where good oh, sure. like good fps play translates into win conditions yeah right i think that it, we, especially with the two that we got with the two dps specifically it's very easy to just like kind of like reaper death blossom say whatever you want about reaper and being like a hero that's like you know boring or whatever sure. death blossom like when it hits like three people like it's just very easy to get the dopamine hit right it's very yeah. like and a lot of the times it's just like instantly you have that satisfaction where and like the sound is also very good for it right because you just like you hear the die 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 and you see the three can it's like fuck yeah that was like awesome right like so for new viewers i think that definitely helped them as well winston like primal i think is one thing that we got lucky with because we had really good winstons specifically like if you have winstons who are like good at primaling like gusha smurf and like fearless right you have those three and it's like it is something that you can really get a lot of value mm-hmm. out of the supports it's like whatever because it was kiriko and sound barriers are cool if you ajax is cool but not a lot of people knew like what ajaxing is like well it's not cool to ajax yeah. um not yeah. a lot of people know like the vernacular of ajax that are probably new to this right um so yeah i thought that you're right that there is like a good uh, there were a lot of times where, like, during the grand finals, when you're like watching like Edison or Proper, and it's like, yeah, this is fucking like awesome. Like, you know, as as much as Rail is probably so unfun to play against, yes, watching it's really fucking awesome. Like, yeah. watching a good Sojourn is fucking so sick. Mm-hmm. Here's here's how I conceptualize the meta, and how like there's probably I'm missing tons of complexity here, but. I feel like it must be nice to observe this meta to a degree because realistically, you don't you don't ever need to be first person on Reaper. None of what happens no. in first person is impressive, right? You probably don't need to be first person on Winston ever. You do, probably don't need to be first person on Lucio a lot. The only people that you need to be first person of is Kiriko to a degree because mm-hmm. if you hit headshots there, that's Pog, and the Sojourns. And in that instance, I it felt like, okay, now we have a meta that's pretty cool to observe. And we have, like, let's be honest, like, a lot of people get attached to these personalities. And that's why, like, you know, a storyline like Shy could pop. Because, you know, that kid is fucking ridiculous at that hero, right? So I think in that, it was kind of a better meta to observe. And as an, uh, as a viewership experience that I had uh, initially given it credit for. I think, mm. realistically, the Reaper made it more readable. If you have this, the mm-hmm. Tracer, and thank you for Dallas Fuel for shutting that yeah. shit down, <laughs> but yeah. if you have the Tracer, <laughs> that makes it less readable, right? Oh, for sure, yeah. Now, you bring up Shy, and I, you know, uh, I prepared a little something. Obviously, our guest last show, Kenobi, uh, had a at the the right call to push spark and and juice their their stonks up 
So I want us all to conjoin hands and, and uh, embrace this prayer. <clears throat> Our spark, which art in playoffs, top four be thy name. Thy will be done on stage as is in heaven. Give us shy and his daily rails and forgive Teru's flanks as we forgive everyone else's for not flanking. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from doubting, O holy spark. For thine kingdom, or for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Spark's pretty good. Spark. In this meta. Literally just in this meta. When you can in have Shy meta. go crazy and you have, I think, somebody who didn't get uh, enough kudos. I thought Teru, I think they had like a very interesting yes. uh, style to them. I thought yeah. uh, their game versus London was pretty interesting, but. Yeah, yeah I mean, this tournament, was, this tournament was the epitome of like what it's like to, to be a Spark fan. Because there is a very good possibility they go out ninth, twelfth, and lose to Toronto. There is a very good possibility. Sure. Shy had to literally get ninety eight percent of his team's kills throughout the entire series for them to win them. Yeah, and he almost deadlifted. Like this was the most spark tournament ever. Because you always look at this team and you're like, I said it last week or last time I was here. They can either win the tournament or go ninth, twelfth, which they almost did because they lo almost lost to Toronto yeah. in a map five where it went the complete distance, and then Shy just had to just like pull out the backpack right they, mm. they were losing to like finale sojourn it was yeah. like well, what well, what's happening here and then they're like oh and then they beat that and then they beat that team and then they go and just run through the losers bracket no problem until they hit the wall that is uh the san francisco shock yeah so like this team was like this team is very frustrating to be a fan of i i said that they were going to get six i didn't even think with all the copium that i was huffing sure <laughs> that they were going to be able to get top four there was like no way in my mind were they ever going to be able to do that but they somehow did because i think shy is just that good um gusha also on winston very good i think you're right about teru i did really like like how they were playing the winston or the the kiriko early on where they were using it more as like a flanker instead of just like joe likes to call it uh spicy moira where you just kind of just throw out um you just throw out your cards you're just a heal bot you. You're just a heel bot. I like, just that, like you know, chunk they people. use Teru more Sometimes. as like a flanker a lot of the time um, and kind of like almost like a pseudo engage where they're just like Kiriko goes first. And then based off the movements we get off of the Kiriko mm. pressure, then the rest of the teams like dives in. I thought that was really cool. Mm. And they played pretty well. I mean, there was that one Toronto series that I think that they very easily could have lost. But beyond that, I think this meta was perfectly made for the spark and top four is probably the highest they're ever yeah, going to get in the season for play. Sure. like that was as high as they can get i didn't there was no way they were going to beat um shock unless they just like went completely ballistic yeah oh for sure and and to kind of uh heighten your point there i think uh their match versus london kind of really showcase what how how bothersome it can be when you have somebody on the flank like Kiriko that's like really harassing the back line, really like making it difficult for, you know, Hottie to really do much of anything. Right? It, it was difficult for him to kind of get a word in edgewise in that match and you could kind of feel it. Um, mm -hmm. A weirdly hype match um, when it came to like live viewership as well. I think a lot of people were very excited by like the Spark story um, by both stories, really. I think there's a little like equal equal amounts spitfire and spark love in the arena uh a lot of spark fans that were actually yeah. like doing chants that was really hype i was really yeah yeah, yeah. Really a lot cool of i that. think most most of the upper teams kind of showed out when it came to like fan engagement i thought that you know expectedly the, the texas teams did well san francisco did very well i think um for as much um for as much stuff we give to the community for not re like recognizing proper uh there's definitely a lot of love um when it came to like fan engagement a lot of signs a lot of people talking about him you know just like really giving him uh his his the respect that he deserves obviously sweeping the awards i don't know if that's something we want to get into but uh Jessica, for you who who kind of like overperformed in, in your mind <laughs> dude i that was probably one of the biggest misreads. But, like, I feel like sort of it, it feels less bad because I was I was obviously under some... Like, the fact that this player I'm about to name came back this year is rush magic. Like, that's some curse shit. That's on some voodoo doll t 
type of like <laughs> miracle shit, right? Like what Edison did, and also during the grand finals, where he, like once again, like he was just popping off. And I, 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 it was it's interesting to see that Fearless, like in in his water review, apparently mentioned like that they just acknowledged that he wasn't as good a, a, a soldier as the best of them. I don't think that's true for the final series. <laughs> I think that that dude popped off, and yeah. that's that's the that's the religion I want to push. Okay, sure. Uh, th this year, <laughs> it's maybe it's not that he should have been, you know, a, an MVP nominee, or no, that no. he should have been even considered for role star. I think <laughs> this his season was too slow for that. Absolutely not. Yeah. But yeah. Jesus Christ, like when they needed that kid to pop off, he absolutely did, right? Like yeah. that guy resurrected his career and just walked on water for the most important matches that Dallas Fuel uh, needed this year, right? Like, mm -hmm. um, I don't think he mo he was necessarily like outperformed or diffed by proper in that series. Um, yeah. I think it's incredible that he was capable of recalling that and it made me really appreciate the vision that someone like rush can have sure and which leads me to another thing right when we're and you know us eventually we'll ha we'll we will have to go to the fillet show of you know the chosen one but let me let me pause here and say mm -hmm. that <laughs> for the very reason that Proper won MVP this year is the same, or sorry, other other way around. Let me invert it. The reason why the Dallas Fuel won the championship is the same reason why Hanbin couldn't win MVP this year. Sure. And the reason is that the team is the superstar for the Dallas yes. Fuel. Yes. If you look at how the the narrative of this where it's like their worst stage is with a starter that isn't Hanbin. Mm -hmm. And then they win the grand finals based on a star level performance of that player that was slotted in for your otherwise MVP. Because let's be honest, I think Hanbin, given the difficulties of this season for tanks, had Hanbin been able to play the entire time, also maybe on Zarya, Mm -hmm. throughout everything, I probably vote for Hanbin. Okay? Sure, yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. So, but the fact that Rush, you know, gave Fearless not just, you know, uh, 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 the ability to slot into a mm -hmm. meta, said, right. we're not going to build our entire pl game plan around Hanbin, even though this guy is our drill sergeant in-game, even though this guy's the mind of our game and, like, helps with Reaper positioning and the stuff that we heard. We... We don't give a hoot about all of this. We're not playing for Hanbin MVP. We're playing for the long term. And the fact that they had the maintenance for Fearless, that, you know, that stage that he played, and mm -hmm. he wasn't just bench warming the entire season only to be brought in, out in playoffs. You have to think that in a series that goes seven maps, that that made a difference. Sure. Mm -hmm. So once again, the reason the Dallas Fuel won the finals is the same reason why Hanbin couldn't win MVP this year. And I think that's a co completely justified statement. I, I don't think Fearless should feel the least bad about this. No. Because, no. like, I, I know, like, it. He, he talked about, like, it hurt him when, when the MVP was announced and that it was um was proper in the end and, like, he really wanted Hanbin to have it and he wanted Hanbin to have the grand finals MVP. I understand those emotions, but at the end of the day, like, your coach made all the right choices and basically formed around an identity that was bigger than the you know and anyone any single player on the team and that's why he won this right like in a highly volatile situation where it isn't necessarily the case that you um have the best uh, meta interpretation. No, like you actually dictate the meta once again. Sure. If you guys yeah, remember, yeah. this this is once again a circle. This entire season, we get into the season, the fuel dominates uh, and makes Genji meta because Sparkle is nuts, right? Yeah. 
They dictate the meta from day one. They come into the playoffs. They once again dictate the meta. Take the uh, trace out of the equation because they realized Reaper is a better uh, pick, and then have Hanbin even you know contribute to the. Come on, like this. This is like an all-time great coaching performance, an all-time team great team performance. This team has really very few weaknesses at this point. Mm -hmm. Um. They have been able to incorporate a lot of players in there. Yes, like players like Doha or Gurio. <clears throat> Maybe they weren't playing first fiddle, but they were sure. always incorporated, right? Like they had mm. the ability to run in house stuff with R Rascal mm. sometimes slotting in and whatnot, right? Like that's it's a team win if you've ever seen one. This is not like um, this is a st systemic win of just a genius and just cohesive coach performance. And I I felt so fortunate to be able to pick Rush's brain based on that because there's always, like, you think you know Overwatch pretty well and then you, like, you I ask these questions and most of the time, even for the best coaches, I pretty much know where that answer is going. Sure. You almost never are able to with Rush. It's not mm. that your idea is wrong. There's just a different mode where this is also right, right? Like right. Mm -hmm. it, it's like we conceive of the game as like a pound for pound thing. Like when the community talks about like, you know, how, how was the final one? Well, Violet against Chio, who won that? Yeah, and then yeah. Fielder against like uh, Finn, how, who won that? That's not how Rush conceives of Overwatch. It's unit against unit. How did that work out? Those puzzle pieces, the machines against each other, right? It's not about the one <clears throat> cog that was stronger than everything else. So yeah. that end, I will tell you straight up, that's more true to what what Overwatch is, even in Overwatch oh, 2. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, sheesh. Like, that. in that regard, like, I, I was choking up a little bit when, uh, in regards to that. Like, yeah, I, I it, it was, like, that fuel just deserved it this season, right? Yeah, oh, I think undoubtedly. it's a good success story as well for Fuel because you remember like starting Fuel, right? And I think all of the, you know, the staff and the GMs and getting the Paris Core, the Element Mystic Core, getting Fearless. I think this was kind of the culmination of all that. And I think you know, Tasmo deserves a lot of credit. Mm. Hashiro deserves a lot of credit for all that they've done getting this team to where they are. Um, I think you're right that this is like a good, very good success story for a team that went through a lot of turmoil. Kind of turmoil start. Yeah. yeah. Undoubtedly. And to kind of circle back to a point that Yuska made about like the dichotomy of like the, the different like team, the different teams that were in the final, right? Like you had, <clears throat> at least it was for me, it was very clear that this was a battle between a team and like Hootie and the Blowfish, right? Like, <laughs> proper was the focal point you saw the entire not the entire game plan shift for dallas but you saw them invest in a lot of you saw them invest a lot into trying to mitigate proper as much as you possibly could because that's a where a lot of teams bread were buttered like obviously sojourn in those like positional fights and those those kind of like you know, as as teams begin to fight for a position, you have somebody like that kind of come out uh, ahead with like a first kill and the fight kind of gets one on its own. But Dallas, Dallas weren't necessarily like banking on that alone. I think Yiska prior to the show kind of mentioned the how did you put it? The, uh, the, the, the what what kind of damage was it? You used a specific word. Damage for what and what for like the the sojourn charge and how like Dallas mitigated uh, the kind of like oh, yeah. useless damage yeah um charge main maintenance or something yes right. charge the the maintenance of you know trying to keep proper out of this game as much as they could yeah it was very apparent I I remember like a very uh stark memory on Coliseo I think I was in the the hotel room at this point but um. They they're all engaging together and they're making these dives. They're making proactive plays, which is difficult to do when you have somebody like proper kind of like bearing down mm -hmm. on you. But you have you know fearless kind of you know just investing a lot of primals into kind of getting into the Sojourn's face, dropping bubbles for Edison so he can play a little bit more aggressively. The whole team just kind of like 
engaging together, even hearing like some of the, the, the contenders, you know, talent talking about how, you know, it's difficult for teams to, you know, contest angles when they know that the enemy team has charge lead and it didn't necessarily feel like fuel ever necessarily let off the gas pedal in that way where like they were afraid of proper when he had a charge advantage. Edison also kind of playing up to one of the, yeah. the, the biggest, you know, single individual performances I think we've ever seen or, or have seen in a long time, you know, hearkening back to like profit and like apex. Um, but this, this really was like a team versus the mechanics. You know, you look at Dallas, I, who I thought had much better macro their ultimates while, you know, there's human error. I felt like San Francisco had a lot of just dead death blossoms. I, I felt yeah. like in certain circumstances you had striker hitting the mark. And then there were just some death blossoms that were just out there. And like a lot of like, the, obviously there's nerves involved, but I felt like there was a stark difference. And again, he, he did make that series close though. Striker, I think yeah, yeah, for sure. played very well. And I think if he, it, I, yeah. I don't know what, I don't know how through the eye of Agamotto, Krusty uh, was able to see that in the grand finals, it's going to be a Reaper meta, but mm-hmm. like, oh, know, he did somehow. for sure. He did. <laughs> I know, but like, it's, it's, oh, know. you know, he's just, he's just like, oh, okay, maybe, you know, <laughs> I can see into the future. There's going to be a Reaper meta for the playoffs and Striker was very good. I think I also want to give credit to Mikey. I think that is a very difficult position he was put in and he played pretty admirably. I would say for what he's going up against in the time that like he you know, hasn't been playing as much. It was a lot of Kaluj previously, like Mikey would just come in and play control. Um, for him to come in into that grand final, play every single map, and play pretty well against probably what can be considered now as, at this point, the best Winston player to ever play the game. Yeah. Like, I think, I think Shock were, like, it was a very much like a mechanics thing, but I think there were a lot of players who kind of picked it up a little bit to, like, match proper in some regard. And just help out a little bit because i think that if there was like maybe and and i like mikey you know if there was maybe just like a little bit more grease on the wheels for like a winston player yeah if they have smurf they win yeah a smurf like yeah yeah. owns about this like this this was this was a this was a unfortunate situation for them where it just felt like the the winston part of it really hindered the shock yes not to say that mikey was playing bad but mikey just didn't have the play time Uh, it was like just like there's and, and like two like people. Time with Kaluj. There's like two people in the world that don't get diffed, uh, you know, main tank diffed uh, against fearless now. And I and I don't want it to. I I don't want this to become like oh main tank diff because I think, I think that I kind think of undersells. I I think I think in some degrees it was, but not for like any of like the really like flat statistics that people are gonna throw around. I think it was. One team had better macro that facilitated their sojourn through like the the vehicle that is Winston, and the other team had uh, an idea of how to do that, but didn't necessarily execute on it too terribly well. Um, and their sojourn did a lot of just like heavy lift. bonker stuff yeah. that just like got them again got them seven maps when they probably didn't deserve it. Right, like that's to the degree of like who this character you know, who proper is to this game. And, and you know, I know Yiska uh, talked about the fellatio, but um, yeah, I, I, I think, it's, I think it is special. <laughs> um, not, not, not necessarily just yet. I think there's just st- still some more things to digest with Dallas, perhaps. Um, yep. I, I said this previously, um, I think after Krusty had signed, um, or the shock rather had signed striker that like, I think, uh i think his days are numbered as like the clear and definitive like best coach um in the game and i think this final kind of like cemented that for me um for a number of reasons we can get into it if you want but i i think it's i think it's i think there's something magical about rush yeah i think he has a very clear i like a a clear identity i think he he kind of not only is he a good scout right Let, let's go through this like he's a good scout he's proven himself on across a number of different metas he's not only found ways to operate outside of the meta but also within it he's taking players who at the start of the season we were telling everybody that we're going to get shoved into lockers and making them 
not necessarily look like, but giving them the room to kind of reinvent themselves, like Jessica is saying, right? Yeah. Edison probably should have never been a starter for this team. Again, this was a third string DPS from the Atlanta rain coming to the Dallas fuel. I think we were all spot on the money. This kid was really never really supposed to do what he just did, right? And, and I mean, his and, his start of the season was not good. On not fabulous. Life. Yeah. He was, granted there was a lot of metas that did, didn't necessarily like put him in that that power position. Yeah. But I mean, if you had told me like that the Reaper player that I saw earlier in yeah. the season was going to be doing this in Grand Finals, I would have been like that. There's just no. Yeah, I mean, like e that. even coming into Kanda Cup, like his 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 Genji play, his Sojourn kind of coming out there and being able to like stand toe to toe, like it, yeah, it's phenomenal. It's incredible, and I think that that has something to do with the environment that Rush creates. And I have to wonder if Krusty has ever created that. Um, I think it's real easy to look back at like the shocks titles and go, wow, like it's it's really impressive that you win all the time. But what happens when you stop winning? What happens when you face adversity? Is this system built to last or is it just built to win? Um, I, I, I do I do think uh, Rush is quickly. Oh, here's a take tangentially related, but kind of ties it in uh i think we're gonna enter the the 2023 preseason and get into power rankings and i have a funny feeling a lot of people are not gonna put dallas at number one when they deserve it but chew on they that keep the roster depends yeah i'll put yeah depends. that's the big thing the, the roster i don't even know if it matters i mean to I be, be fair i i, I think I, I i would i will agree that i think as long as this team has rush they're probably fine. I, I think that based on everything Yiska said and sure. this season and managing, you know, this tank situation that he had to do and then mm -hmm. getting them to win this season, like, yeah, I, I think that Rush being there is probably the linchpin for everything, right? Yes, you can have, like, fantastic players, but I think a lot of the time it's like, this is what, it's it's kind of how I used to view Ray before he retired, was just like, yeah, we have this like one really good player, but the team and the team dynamic is like the and like what I've set up. And there were some people who didn't buy into that, which was a problem uh, at the end for Chengdu. But like, I think they're very similar in terms of how they like operated their team. And I think that as long as you, because we're looking at, I mean, look at Chengdu without Ray. It's, I mean, they don't have money either, but like, it's just, it's a disaster. So it's like as long as you, I think keep this. I think as long as you keep this guy on your team. Yes. You should be totally fine. Should be. I don't. I, I have a funny feeling there is going to be some some movement made. Uh, I, I, have, I just have a, a sneaking suspicion that we're going to get real, real cold on this team real fast. Um, and I don't know that. I, I think we might walk into the next season uh, cold on the, you know, the, the returning champions. Um, I don't know that. We've ever seen that, but I, I don't know. There's something about this Dallas Fuel team that I think is magical and deserves respect. Um, I just hope that we continue to give them that. Uh, Yiska, any final thoughts for Dallas in the, the grand final before we move on? No, nah, I think um, I'll probably... I haven't treated myself to the Fearless POV yet, to the VOD. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that also should be pretty illuminating. I think also this is... This is something, once again, where I have to watch my rhetoric. What I will sure. say is, if someone is just primal blading like a madman, like Fearless is, and has like insane primal mechanics, that's the player. The bubble sure. placement, most of the time, that's the team that gets the value out of that. It's not just yes. the bubble placement. That's, you know, obviously coordinated on a b bunch of maps, especially yeah. uh, control. And then also, how does the p team play around the bubble, right? Like, yes. I was watching Proper's POV. Man, that that stuff was tight. Like, they were not <laughs> giving <laughs> any surface area to uh, prop for Proper to get any picks. Like, and they they had this internal timer around. Um, like, it's almost like a second ult tracking that people had to do. You know, like you ult track and then like lose your eighty percent. Blah blah blah. You have to ult track like. Yeah, Sojourn is probably 100, 100 charge, 100 charge, 100 charge. 
and then you have to play around these cycles. And that's what Felix talked about with Chai, who just held onto it and just like, you know, put the fear of God into uh, <laughs> your, your team, right? Because that kid hits those. So mm. I think there's also something to be said about like knowing that it's it's so hard because you want to get the quick kill, but you also want to so, sort of wait for your higher probability rails to hit when their cooldowns are already depleted and you don't have to necessarily hit around the bubble or whatever, right? So yeah. I think that was their timing around the, the charge. Like, they had some internal timer going, like, nobody take damage, let proper decay. Yeah. Okay, go, right? <laughs> Wasn't always the case. Like, Edison got a like an unfortunate amount of, uh, like, pre-cold, like, in the neutral picks that must yeah. that are predicated on like you losing a fight like the, the shock losing a fight coming back edison still sitting on you know 100 charge or close to it re-engaging before the decay happened and just like getting a, a pick based on that that's unfortunately like just a mechanic that needs to be baked into your team in this meta right that, there's oh, no sure. way around it yeah I think I think I think you touched on two things there that were super important. One that I didn't really pick up on was the you know the you know the internal feeling for whether or not a sojourn had rail or didn't. Um, and I have to imagine that probably comes from your sojourn, right? Like I have to imagine this is Edison, you know, having a feel for where at it, where proper is, how much damage he's done, you know, being able to like properly communicate that like hey he has rail careful don't contest this angle i not you know knowing that he's not going to um but another thing that felt like a very positive metric for the success of their a uh, team um was like you said being able to get consistent value with your primal rages it was mm. something that i saw i did not see from london in their game versus spark i thought hottie had a pretty quiet game i'm gonna be nice choose my words very carefully um they didn't necessarily i don't think they really showed up on stage to be completely honest in that match i thought they were like pretty flustered it felt like they didn't, weren't really like playing any type of game mm. uh, but credit to him i thought they did well but like you you compare his performance versus somebody like uh you know a a fearless dante i think had a better read but i i, I don't feel super equipped to kind of jump into houston but surprising surprisingly good for uh Yep. all the all the stuff we give him um but yes. being able to consistently find value i think reiner if anything was another one that was like you compare what was expected of you to what we got it it really wasn't the same yeah um and being able to consistently get kills push people out get in front of the sojourn without getting like completely chunked down i don't even know if you need to get kills with your primal so I mean, much as like yeah. being able to consistently the uptime in which like you are in the sojourn's face kind of like creating distance for your team before you have to exit because you're just getting like pooed on uh i i felt was like a very like positive metric for like success in the playoffs it, it, you know those two things correlated i felt like especially during overclock like that's when a lot of the yeah. winstons would just primal the overclock because you, it's mm -hmm. nigh impossible to get value out of it yes you can chunk winston and to be honest, it's like very difficult to do that because unless you're hitting headshots, it's not like the same amount of damage you'd be getting. So like Winston just runs at you with a thousand fifty health, yeah, and you're overclocked. And yes, you have one escape move, and it's nigh impossible to find a way to get any types of shots around that. And I think that's like something Dallas did a lot in that grand final, where every time there was overclock on proper, it was just like. All right, fearless, just go in primal. Like the, the, he literally cannot play the game. Yes, he'll live probably, but at that point, you've probably forced out the teleport from Kiriko. You forced out Suzu. You forced out the jump. Then the rest of the team can just run at you, and you don't have to mm -hmm. I, I just for one primal. I feel like that's an, <clears throat> it's. I feel like it, there is a possibility that where the primal mechanics have to entail that you kind of have an idea about the trajectory that you're pushing uh, the overclocked soldier in because yeah. if you are actually pushing them into a an angle where they now have free reign, like, For sure, I don't know, yeah. like half a second to look at your supports, these top tier players will do that. And Shy did do that on several occasions. What you need to do with your primal mechanics is either shove them around, like you, you need... In a corner. Geometric, like, 
overview of like or an, an understanding like court vision where okay my team is currently here here's the obstacle either i shove him around the corner so he doesn't have vision or like i need to put place my body in front of it so he doesn't have vision and has to pierce or whatever like if you put it put like someone like shy at a 90 degree angle and give them like a second to hit the shot on your Kiriko or whatever he will do so that Yep. He will do that. So that it wasn't just like killing the Kiriko, which, yes. uh, sorry, not Kiriko, uh, the the Sojourn. It was about like putting them in like putting them, not place getting them to, see right. to, over clock to, to extinguish them. Right. Yeah. Because like quite frequently, like you can keep your Sojourn alive through the primal, right? Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. So, I mean, a lot of the times, I don't think a lot of Sojourns died at all. Because, I mean, you just yeah. have Kiriko run over and just, like... I think early on in the bracket, you saw a lot of Sojourns just getting picked just because, like, Primal into the Sojourn. They just, like, mechanics them, kill them in a corner, like, GG. Um, but as I think the weekend went on, you started to see a lot more of what Yiska's talking about in terms of just, like, shoving them and creating mm -hmm. space for your team. But also having, like you said, the court vision of... You know, not putting them in any kind of extra opportunity to, you know, cut in and, and find a pick. Yeah. Yeah. It was interesting to see how that developed. But yeah, I would say. I would say in, in the weird bell bell curve meme where it's like, oh, better Winston equal better team into, well, what about all the sojourns and all about the DPS and, you know, what about you know, support, so whatever, and then right back down to better Winston, better team, but for, like, a completely different <laughs> reason from when we started, right? Like, it's not just about getting the kills, it's a really about, you know, your bubble, bubble placement. Again, Fearless, I, I mentioned it before about, like, how it felt like there were more opportunities for him to bubble for Edison to be a little bit more aggressive, but it was more of a, a master class of, like, him placing them really, really, like, um, and I know this goes for everybody, but these felt super, super intentional where like there were opportunities for him to like cut off Mikey from getting healing or or like cutting off like sight lines or or it was just the way that he used his bubbles felt like it was super, super like impactful on the way that Dallas as a team was able to play the game. But also you still have the fearless mechanics on the Winston. He's also still getting kills. He's also still high in damage. It wasn't necessarily about those flat stats that just, you know, I think everybody kind of flocks to. It was more about the resource use, how they were playing as a team versus a monster and his cronies, the raid boss, as I feel like we should call him. But do we get into the raid boss next? Do we get into the faker of uh, oh, Overwatch League? Okay. Okay. I feel so like we <laughs> I feel like we've given Dallas their their due. It's been. I, I, sh I, you talk about content, Yiska. <clears throat> I really do think that more people need to go and check out the five years of fuel. I know that it sounds like it's just a, uh, a big, uh, circle clapping hands, uh, of the Dallas fuel, but it was, it was definitely eye opening. I learned yeah. some things from it that I, I didn't necessarily know. For sure. Um, it, it's, it's well produced. I think it deserves more love, especially with, you know, uh, Ironically enough, it kind of predating their 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 eventual championship run. So go, definitely go give that a look. Uh, so proper. Uh, is he faker? Is he not faker? Discuss. Okay, so I think All right, yes, good. <laughs> it's it's important that we define what a faker moment is. Okay, a faker moment isn't that the player just comes on and like has to win everything. That's not necessarily a faker moment. If you go back and look at MVP voting, he didn't sweep. Like, or Faker didn't, right? Like, at the time, the community was actually quite like Piglet. Piglet has been carrying the entire world. Yeah. Uzi was going hot that tournament, right? What a Faker moment is, is when people in the scene that know their shit, experts or, um, you know, let's say pro players and whatnot, if they just tell you that there's something about this player that is unprecedented, will is unlikely to be, you know, like ever recreated, and is of course like you know the full full breadth of skill sets, and that that is very likely to just foreshadow mm -hmm. the the most dominant player of all time, right? Yeah. Yep. Now this is crazy to say in comparison to um, 
you know, something like Faker because like he won Worlds first year. Proper was one map short. Um, I would I would argue a few fights short. Yeah, I think that 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 push map was like about one or two fights. If Edison, I don't think gets those last two kills before the last fight, San Francisco has a chance to just like walk it all the way through and win. I I, I definitely see that angle. I think there's there's a couple fights predating that that I I really. I look at Striker and I'm like, boy, howdy, yeah. you might want to hold, <laughs> you, you might want to hold on to that one, Chief. Or yeah, yeah. there's a couple of rushes that I was like, Ugh. maybe the the fox, the, the, the Katsune didn't guide you here or, or there. It was <laughs> a little, uh, oh, another thing, I hate to completely interject. Teams got really, really good at disengaging Katsune Rush. Shout yeah, out to them. Very good. Really cool. yep. Yeah, very, Dallas, very good. It was really, it was really cool. hard. It's really hard to do Especially because it Dallas. also increases your movement speed. But like yeah. super, super, super well done. Like yeah. five, Dallas, five, think, five days. I think what it was Dallas crazy. would do is they would just hold boost from Lucio and just yeah. fucking push it back. Yes. Because I think yes. they match actually. Or Lucio is a little bit fat. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but I think course. like even going back to like Dallas, Houston, like they I think teams had a better flow or a better read of like the flow of like how the game was going. Like. They knew that like that this team wanted to just engage with Kitsune Rush and it became less of just like, oh, you rushed, I'll rush. Like I hated that aspect of early on in the bracket and we got away from it. It was really cool. Wanted to give some yeah. credit there. But proper faker. I agree. This shit's never gonna happen again. I want to shout no. out an older uh esports journalist who I don't know that if they write anymore, Rally Jaffa. I think mm. they said very eloquently that we would never see another team like Runaway ever again. Uh, I hijacked that and said we would never see another team like the 2019-2020 San Francisco Shock. I do not expect to see another player like Proper in mm -hmm. this game's lifetime. No, bar none. Yep. No, I think that and, and this gets crazy. A performance I just, like, like this this season, right? Like, yeah, no, yeah, we won't season, get another one like, of these. Like it's your it's your rookie season. So everyone's like talking about He Sang, right? He Sang's not gonna. It's just no, I, he's I not. don't think it's he's it's not. like the, the thing about Proper is that Proper. And the difference between, I think, Proper and Faker is that Proper was, like, somewhat of a known quantity before this. Yeah. Right? Like, he was on O2. We had good tape of him. Faker in 2013 was, like, plucked from solo queue. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, it wasn't, you know, Faker hadn't played competitively before 2013. Shit. This Weird, time, weird synchronicity. If, if my lore is correct, I'm pretty sure Runner actually is one of the first people to, like, spotlight Faker. If, if, if my lore is correct. Could be, could be YouTube trying. comments, correct could me be. if I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure could it was Runner. But like, but the thing I don't get is like this aversion to like, yeah, crowning proper at this moment because like he realistically should like what he's done is incredible. He had the first, uh, it's called a match deadlift right now, but like he has the only one this season where he has a hundred and eighty eight percent of the total final of limbs during a series. The next closest is shy against Toronto, who had ninety eight percent, and. I just don't like I don't want to be the person five years from now who so looks true. back at this and says like I like I, I was just wrong about proper mm. like why why are why is there that aversion to it because I think like now we have a perfect opportunity with this player to like not necessarily make him faker because faker is just right. an entity but no one in 2013 looked at faker and was like yeah this guy's going to be one of the biggest celebrities in the world right no oh, one no. looked at that like that but like we have a chance now to do that with this player who everyone who knows about Overwatch, like, I mean, I, even Deepay was on, like, talking yeah. about Proper, right? Like, everyone who talks about Proper, who knows their salt, talks about how good this kid is. Yeah. And for some reason, we just don't want to, don't want to coronate him yet. Because, because why? Like, for what reason? Like, I, I saw, I saw a thing where someone's like, the best player to play Overwatch 2 hasn't played yet. I disagree. Per best player to play Overwatch 2 right now is proper. Yeah. I, I like where that person's head's at because I I'd have to get a little bit more context, but I do think that there is like a looming graduating class from Overwatch 2. Yes, I, yes, I will agree with that. But even agree. then, I even don't then, know. Is anyone going, is, are one of those players going to ever be I don't proper? Know. Yeah, I don't know. Like this, yeah. this is unheard of. I, I said some, I, I think like, there was some like non endemic uh, games press that like, oh, is Jonak our faker in like season one? And it was like, no, this is dumb. Stop. Like, I think that's like the right attitude. Like, hold, hold your pitchforks for stuff like that. 
But when we have somebody that is is sweeping awards, is 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 backpacking their team, and I don't say that lightly, um, is doing it in unprecedented fashion. Th- this is this is special. We are and, we are and, not to see this yeah. for a long time, if ever. And I get there is this like sort of fatigue factor to it. Yeah. Like I, I do understand that to an extent that everyone's like talking about proper I and mean, going into this like season, everyone was talking about it as well. Maybe not as much, but like the thing about it is, is that if you're tired about hearing about proper now, just I, I don't know. Oh, just wait. Like, yeah. Just yeah, mute. I'm sorry. Mute yeah. the stream. You you you're not, you're not going to stop hearing about proper for the next five years. Yeah. It's 10 years almost after 2013. And Faker is like, like the 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 scene of him like in the state farm arena in san francisco where he puts up like the shush shine like the dude's a phenomenon yep. and it's 10 years later like yeah. Yeah. We, we we can get to that point with proper but i don't want to be the one back in t- in 10 five years if the, you know <laughs> hoping that overwatch is still around and all that mm-hmm. stuff like i, I don't want to be the one who is just like yeah i was you know i i didn't believe in this player even though there were all these signs in front of me that he is probably going to be one of the greatest players of all time to play and keep now, in mind there there are a lot of like what ifs in terms of hopefully sure. this kid's wrist holds up something like this yeah I mean, Shout hopefully, out to MVP, yeah. hopefully we we like have a consistent game experience that doesn't change too much so like suddenly we're back to goats and even there, I would probably think like probably I mean, he, could said, pop- he, he can play Zarya. It wasn't yeah, that bad. Yeah, like, but you get you get the idea. Like, if something yeah. like radically changes about this game, like yeah. that could just change what it means to be good at Overwatch. But barring like any consistency in the exper- in the identity of this game, and then the ability for Proper's body to do what it currently is doing. I mean, this this guy is is just a really ill. I know that nobody has has ever been like this. I'm sorry, oh. but it's like everyone's like, yeah, I like the, some people were close and whatnot. And I think especially like it's interesting that it hasn't hasn't hit APAC as much yet from the votes. But this this is special. Like if you str- scrim mm-hmm. a- enough against this guy, I've never heard stories like these. Like it's it's ranging from like just like you're you're basically there's almost no reason to practice against proper, like <laughs> that nobody else is going to do that against you. What he's doing, he's not going to like interpret the the space in the same sense. Like we we have a a German football player called uh, uh, Müller, right? Thomas Müller, and he yeah. was like. His coach famously in the past said, uh, like, space interpreter, right? Mm-hmm. And then Müller went on to become the World Cup uh, top scorer the, the year after, uh, after Van Gaal said that. Like, Proper is a top five mechanics player. And I, I'll say, like, I think he's not top one. I think that's probably reserved for someone like Shy and like Lip. Mm-hmm. But he... Like he has, uh, he has everything just like in the upper echelon of like ability, court vision, um, yeah. movement, um, presence, ability to communicate his ideas, or well, what what is sometimes called briefing, right? Um, just the flexibility to do it on hit scan on flex DPS. I like. Actually, the name Faker is not that often brought up when I talk to coaches. They will say, I guess if you have LeBron, that could work. Yes, yeah. and that was something, I wanted to bring this up, I didn't want to interrupt you. But that was, was something also- that I would overhear, I overheard somebody saying, I won't name who I thought it it was, mm. um, but there was somebody that I overheard kind of talking about how the, the matches were supposed to go and like what their thoughts were on it. And they were talking about how there was some talk about, you know, how this meta is like, well, if you just have LeBron, maybe you can just do it. Maybe Shaw can just make the run because mm-hmm. that's the type of player who, who commands presence, who enforces their will on this game, no matter what you put in front of them. Again, go back to the first stage. This kid is doing magical things on Genji, things that beg belief. And then you put him on hit scan and he's he's he outshines most of the good hit scans you think are you, you, you like happy 
And okay, he didn't well, we even have, have that much experience this, this year, yeah. right? On like that's sure. the big difference. Yeah. Like like someone like Merritt just played like farmed so yeah, Sojourn. He LT. played Sojourn the entire <laughs> season. That's it, right? I think. Where was I Kilo? Think, yeah, yeah. He got benched the for the about, star. I think the thing about this like kind of LeBron comparison is something I was thinking about. Where it's like I think at some point. Because I think, I, I, again, barring any, like, you know, wrist injuries or drastic change into the way that we view Overwatch 2 as a current game now, like, he's going to keep winning MVPs, guys. And then there's going to the be thing. a point yeah. where we get, then there's going to be a point where we get voter fatigue and Derrick Rose is voted MVP because LeBron yeah. won, like, three yeah. Yeah, yeah, or yeah, four Yeah, I think that's row, possible. And then they were just like, we just have to give it to Derrick Rose. Like, mm. Derrick Rose is having a good season, and then that kind of goes into, like, the whole... MVP debate and, and I do want to just I do just want to state that like this conversation that we're having about profit or prof per rather is detached from the MVP voting because I think MVP voting is its whole like other thing where it's like yes. how do you view players and everything like that this is just about yeah, the yeah. narrative of the player going forward right he's got the MVP now so there's nothing you can do about it anymore right, right? like he's just he has it the, the only time that you can really uh in terms of talking about voting is if you're unanimous mvp which i don't i yeah, doubt that's will ever never possible yeah, we, we will it not shouldn't be it yeah. actually shouldn't be the case yeah it's happened <laughs> no it should once in basketball it's happened once recently in basketball because i think steph curry was unanimous MVP mm. or, or Giannis. there was someone who was but like it might have been lebron anyways but like i think the lebron comparison is more apt because it's just like this guy is no matter like what he's doing it feels like this person is going to be one of the best most gifted players that we have in this game and mm. we've been talking about lebron for how long it's like two, 2004 was like when lebron yeah. was like yeah. a rookie i mean the, and the dude's still the most one of the most prolific basketball I'll just wait till world. proper leaves san francisco i think they're gonna be out in the streets burning jerseys again i mean yeah we're gonna we're gonna continue to talk about this player and it's deserved that's the thing is just like there isn't like an agenda, right? It's just like uh -huh. the guy is so good, and we should really cherish the fact that we're watching someone this good play our game and play it to such a high level and really build up a player like this and build up his star. Because at this point, it's like, again, I keep saying it, but I don't want to be five years from now and like proper is still playing as good as he is, and we just don't have the narrative to continue to back it up. I mm -hmm. I hope that because everything happens quicker in esports, and I think also this this community has a weird propensity that sort of makes it like by osmosis, it sort of makes it also into the brains of those vo voting. I hope we don't have voter fatigue already next season. I, I could totally see that and put a pin in it because I think that there might be a world where Proper is once again the best player over the entire season, and everyone's sure. just like. You know, behind closed yeah. doors, like, yeah, oh, that's Dante. boring and whatnot. Also, I mean, I'll, that's what happened to LeBron. It's literally what happened to I'll, LeBron. They I'll, were just like, we're we're sick of we're sick of giving these to LeBron. We'll give it to Derrick Rose, even though LeBron's been the best player in the world. I'll, also, but, I'll I'll straight up tell you, like, there are some integrity issues with, with with how the votes are cast because, like, there's a ton of counter incentive of, for instance, voting for a player that's under contract. Why would you do that? Why would I vote like waste my vote on a player that I can't have next year? Why not oh. give it to a player that I can have next year and stroke yeah. the ego a little bit? You'd yeah. you'd be surprised how much at least people think this uh, is estimated in there, right? Or yeah. like people wanting to be cute and tr wanting to you know ah he's going to win it anyway, so let's reward someone yes. else, right? I they, think we that do that not have the integrity of this award, like. Keep in mind, the best voter base are teams. They are probably, like in my estimation, I, of course, there's no objective measurement, but if I look at the type of the, like groups that these votes come from, mm -hmm. the teams are probably the ones that were closest to what was true this year, right? Sure. And even they are compromised. In, in other sports, it comes from the journalists that do it f full time and they're like, held accountable for, um, you know, like judging the game accurately. And the ga the, like the top sports are actually about that. And there's science involved. And, you know, like it's it's a different deal. Yeah. This, this is not the same demand here. We don't have the amount of uh, journalists that spend time in Overwatch to uh, have an opinion. And this is not about good and bad opinions. This is just like quantify how many p journalists do this full time. It's legitimately like the people I can think of is like, um, 
Liz Richardson. Sure. Um, yep. Then, like, I think William from from Dick Soto, even though I'm not sure how how much he does Overwatch League coverage anymore. There's, uh, sorry, Michael from former Upcomer, I think. Um, there was Sean Collins. Yep. No longer doing that full time. I'm not sure if he's a little still, bit biased, still, but sure. Still full, yeah. Of course, right? That's th <laughs> there we start with the problem. Yeah. But like, yeah. they, I, I would, you would probably struggle to find ten people with the amount of time investment that it probably sure. is just the baseline Lines. in in uh, mm -hmm. in sports, right? So, ta like, we just don't have the volume there. It will always be on the teams to to do that. The broadcasting talent, that's that's another group. They like, other than the analysis desk, like they are predisposed to make it fun. They like their objective isn't necessarily to, you know, put put out the, the ruler and measure, right? Like that's not their job necessarily, yeah. right? Even though I will say, like, once again, they they probably like I I, I was surprised, uh, for instance. Okay, so this is a f weird measurement, and like, okay, I, I expect some pushback on this point anyway. But um, if you look at the people that actually ended up predicting who, like, their votes went ended up being the actual uh, players that won it, mm -hmm. I think Custa and Reinforce are one and two. Those sure. guys had the best coverage. They. It's it's I, I don't believe like of course there's there's a lot of you know like circular effects they are they have the you know the <coughs> the platform to inform the public of their opinion therefore like it feeds back into their opinion but they also have the expertise to judge that and also they take cues from uh from experts right so sure. they just had a um like a solid understanding of the entire voter base. I think Eric can bring it up. I'm not sure. Can, can you make it a little bit bigger so I can show? <sighs> By the way, there was also one weird thing. I'll I'll just say because um, wait, Eric, I'm confused as to what you're showing me. Um, what's the weird thing? No, nah, like the the the, it it's just not on the screen. What what I ah what why right, um but like generally speaking. Um, yeah, this one. Uh, oh, okay. So, yeah, okay. Um, I'll I'll just tell you, the Overwatch League got my ro vote wrong for tank. Uh, I didn't have Adi. I had uh, someone. Someone. Yeah. Someone. Yeah. I also had. Some. Eric, I'll, I didn't get a vote. But... I'll just show <laughs> you what I see, no and there's no way for me to make this bigger. I don't know. Your aspect ratio is kind of boned. Um, but yeah, like long story short, like. There's not a great way. There's no... We don't have the resources to ever make it, like, super scientifically awesome. Yep. Stats and Overwatch are impossibly hard to rate. This game is impossibly hard to rate. There were probably five to six players where if you voted for them MVP, I wasn't... I, I would have not been mad at all for you sure. to, um, to have done that stuff, right? Um, oh, I, I got it here. So, like... Uh, um, so like, like of I've the of the fourteen votes, was it fourteen? Am I right? Fourteen votes. I think Green Force got thirteen right once again, uh, and then Casta got twelve right. Sure. Uh, uh, fifteen votes. I'm sorry, fifteen. So, um, overall, like, if you want to look for a barometer of like, because the aggregate is the most likely to be right. I think um like reinforce just like has his finger on a pulse right for um yeah for w what happens in competitive overwatch so um I think that's also a metric that everyone should s sort of aspire to unless you really feel very strongly uh, about a player making it like for instance in my mind I don't feel bad for voting for someone over Hardy I think that's a position that you absolutely can hold I also think you can absolutely hold putting Smurf in as MVP, and you can probably also argue yep. Hanbin, depending on what kind of uh, criteria, criteria you have. Once again, yes. I'm, like yeah. it, it, I think our our discourse about this made it sound like we're shitting on people for having different opinions. That's not the case. It's like I'm trying to highlight 
a systemic problem that's never going to be solved in Overwatch because it's too complex, because we do not have the required, you know, sheer volume of experts in this scene. The experts that do the best have a vested interest in not voting, you know, their absolute best opinions for different reasons. There's regional bias. Regional bias is not, you know, I'm biased for my region, but it's like, it's fucking 6 a.m. I'm not watching that right. match. Yeah. Like, you know, how informed can you be in MP? Or, impact, yeah. like, trying, MVP, MVP discussion is like a whole different thing. Because it's always like, always, even in like every sport, I feel like it's like, what really does what MVP, MVP mean MVP? to you? Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. There's sometimes, there's sometimes people where it's like trans, like, where it's transcendental, where it's like Shoya Tani, for example, is like sure. playing pitcher and batter, right? And he's like putting up giga numbers and like both of them. That's where it's like, that's where it's like, yeah, that one Very probably, clear. that guy, that guy probably deserves it. And then there are people who still like complain because obviously it's sports and, you know, no one's happy all the time. But like, yeah. I think that when we go back to like the proper discussion about it, it's just more about the narrative of him. It's like he's, yeah. he's got to get his dues, man. No. Like he, it, it's, once He's again, gonna be around for a very long time. If you didn't, want, I, 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 I was gonna vote for. If I had to, like, if I had a vote, I was under the impression that they wouldn't give Rookie of the Year and MVP to the same person. So I voted mm. for Kev for Miami. Like, yeah. If I, if and I once again, like, it, it can both be true that you recognize Proper to be the most skilled, talented player that has ever touched Overwatch, and for you to not vote MVP, him MVP yeah. this year. Yeah. That's ab absolutely totally possible. Fine. And it can be our fake, like, I can say this is our faker moment without ha me having cast a vote for proper this year. That's uh, yeah. actually not at all contradictory to, to the thing that I'm describing. Um, but, yeah, I think overall, um, the, the, I wish it wasn't so, I, I, in, a, in a sense, it also drove a little bit of spice in there, which was fun, right? Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I, I, I think, Generally speaking, um, I think the league would probably do well to at least give some definition for roll stars. That's that's the one that where MVP can be open to discussion. Roll stars is a yeah. different one, right? And that's yeah. also like roll stars seems a little bit more confined. You already have to feel a little bit weird after the season of profit having gotten DPS, you know. Um, sure. it, it's not a perfect like science or there, or right? Stage. Yeah, I, I think, but overall, if I look at the people that we ended up, like, nominating and or winning, I'm, I'm at, at zero other, and yep. I'll, uh, okay, Avril, come at me. <laughs> I think Iziaki is out of pocket. I would have voted for him. I, I think it's it's fringe, but support support is difficult. I That was the one yeah i think area they, that i was like i yeah. think i i voted i have i, I did mine just for fun i had shoe fielder chio vendame and yeah Hiyaki. shoe fielder i think i was definitely not plugged in apac as much as i'd like to be but after playoffs i was definitely like on board the vendame train for yeah. sure i like vendame yeah and i think soul have a very good player in Vindame. i also had a bad vote there i i had finn for support i think in hindsight that's uh, probably not a great word i think that's oh, i had i'll do you one better i had last row oh i don't hate i, I don't but hate there again it's i i definitely was not plugged into apac as much as i could be and then support's always a weird one because it's like okay well how do i want to approach this is it yeah. two and two is it you know who i think is the best dps um, felt like it was the easiest one yes to be dps is super easy i thought tank was super easy Support is like okay. I could see how this gets a little squirrely, and I'm not like, tank if you want to go for it. Tank, I had, I had this, I had the same top three except for Hot. Well, I had, I had Reiner, I had Smurf, I had Hanbin, and I had Dante as my other. Uh, mm. ah, I'm not Dude, mad at it. Okay, one thing okay. I will say that I feel is wrong is someone having only three votes. Like if there's, a, I, yeah, if there's, and that's not the case, right? Like. Everyone that voted here could have had someone in fifth place individually and like in a yeah. ranked choice voting where you re like vote every single starter. Like there's a possibility that someone yeah. is still like the fifth best tank. It just like shook out that, you know, in a, in a different way, yeah. even though it's unlikely. But I, like, I feel like someone is the future of tanks. Like the yeah. profile of this mm -hmm. kid, what I agree. he is able to do 
is Smurf esque is like that's that's the one that's the gold standard. Then there's Smur someone. Mm -hmm. That's what your tank has to be. Mm -hmm. I I would argue if I'm Rush, I'm a I'm a have Hanbin oh, no, practice no, 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 no. those <laughs> like those heroes in the offseason. I, I think like. I think like when I like because the thing about like talking about the difference is like the reason like I would pick Dante over like, someone I love someone like I was going into this season like me and Herix were talking about it like yeah. someone's really good like he's from the Team CC main tank academy Alabama of main tanks like he's going to be very good and, and once he was on Florida I was like probably not going to get the props that he deserves mm -hmm. even though he's been playing very very well uh but like when I put Dante in here the thing about the tank roll star is like it's not defined like you mentioned so it was just like i thought dante for being a dps player and just fucking playing tank as well as he did like yeah i'll give him roll star he's sure. he's good enough for yeah, yeah, he played sure. well enough for me yeah. to be doing that i think it's it's commendable um and and to jump to yiska's point there for a moment uh i'll do you one better i think someone goes to shock next year Oh, Base. dude, that's oh over. God. I'm, I'm a, I'm a keep over, it 100 yeah. bucks. If it's someone proper, it's done. It, it, this, it, this it, year well, would have not been close if someone had been on, on shock. I think, I think that is the perfect. That's like Holland tank. going to Man City, bro. It's like it's over. Just wrap it. That's up that's right who now. you want. You want someone. Yeah, yeah, what do you do? You absolutely do. In sh at at shock. That is that is the key to unlocking another the the the, the third title for the San Francisco Shock. It makes perfect sense. Are the are you gonna have to pay for it? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, probably a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, you got to bankroll Florida for yes. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that that's that's the key, and that's like that speaks to the caliber that I think someone is. Um, and that was my fourth tank as well. But regardless, with the awards, is there anybody else from playoffs that you guys feel deserves some kudos? Any individual Merit. players? Merit. Merit. Okay. Yeah. Merit. Yeah. Uh, I think the entirety of London should be very proud of what. Oh yeah. Oh sure. One hundred percent. Like. We probably said that a lot, but like Christopher getting coach of the year, definitely easiest vote it. ever. I mean, I saw his when he when he was doing that playoff speech, the one that they posted on Twitter. Mm -hmm. I was ready to run through a fucking wall for Christopher, <laughs> yeah. man. Like that's good shit. And like I think that it is really incredible what this team did throughout the entire season with what they had. Um, and yeah, they just I mean they finished I think is it considered six where they finished or fifth six? It's fifth like, six right? but they fifth, six yeah i mean uh, incredible incredible job yeah. from that team and i think that they um they got some really really great players on the team i've always been a fan of landon really like how mm. uh from like collegian playing from northwood like i'm really glad that he's getting success everyone on that team just there's some really, hardest really decisions impressive. for this them this offseason i'm gonna tell they, you that yeah, much yeah um because like I, I guess we can talk about off season a little bit, but yeah, I think that that team, it's it's the greatest. Like, yeah, if you think back, like Valiant under packing, that's a yeah. great story. Paris uh, under, um, you know, like Rush. <laughs> I, no, no, not Rush. Um, Get a Maced and J Mac, like that, those oh, guys. Okay, yeah, it's yeah. probably le like a lesser su su success story than packing had, but like this is the gold standard. Right, like, uh, sorry, mm, you probably would have to say Boston, but season one is a little bit, you know, it's an unfigured out market. But yeah, in terms of like uh, uh, overperforming resources, yeah, Boston is still, you know, far and away the best. Again, to do it in year five of Overwatch League, where everyone now sort of has a clue of roster building, and do it with players that everyone like, uh, like other than no, they, they, there is no, you know, like in, in I mean, in do terms you remember of week. Do you remember week one, like how people were talking about Backbone? Like, do you? And yeah, then yeah. the kid just like from then just yeah. was, I mean, one of the like, I think one of the just in terms of like the narrative around Backbone and like moving over to Zen and all that stuff. Like I thought back like that's that's a real glow up story. Yeah. Right. For that yeah. player. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the Boston lineup, I think that's yeah. genuinely also predicated on just like bad scouting on the other teams. Like someone like Striker can come from a team. I, like, yeah. I'm sorry, like Sparka isn't st the striker going forward. Like he, that's not the oh, talent no. level of Sparka or in, in, by comparison for, for everyone else around. And Hardy is also not, you know, like a standout player like that. Like Boston in season one was just like a lot of very good players and one superstar. And then, like, 
this is just a complete team performance. Well, I'll say like definitely overperform or also um, no. Like I, I still don't think like if you're a top tier team, you probably don't take any one of those players on your roster and have a co oh. co expect a considerable improvement. This is just a team win. Like it's yeah. yep. It, it's yeah. In the that team is the star. Yes. Yeah. It's mini rush. Yeah. I there was there's a a, a a thumb tack in an idea that I want to play around with and I feel like this playoffs kind of highlighted three different blueprints. One of them I think London kind of like spearheads with like I guess Dallas in, in in a way but I think the idea of like a budget where it's just like oh if I'm like a big suit and I just look at the Overwatch League and I go oh London can do it with you know a million like why can't we go budget <laughs> do, do what london did i think that in, in a lot of similar ways you could look at like san francisco's success and be like oh well they have proper we'll just go find me a proper go ahead go, go do it like yeah. go chase him right like there are these like blueprints to success that i think a lot of like uh managements will try to adopt um and most will probably fail um but yeah. it, it's it's really interesting to see uh how many ways you can find success in in Overwatch 2. And and I wanted to pose this to you, Iska. You talk about, you know, five year five. Is it fair to call this year five or is this year one? Yeah. I think there are good reasons as to think. Or is this year zero? Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean I, I can tell you for what it is year one again. Sure. Um and I guess we get into the juice part of this episode, but like in in season one, this esports was given a lot of advanced like confidence, right? Like everyone was like, okay, new and if like the the esports NFL, you know, localized leagues, viewership, we're throwing out, we're getting DJ Khaled for almost a million, you know, all that stuff, right? Like um, happened, and then we increasingly lost confidence we lost viewership and everything like this right now we have the viewership back right and we actually exceeded it in some way the confidence isn't I, i'm gonna tell you this straight up at this point in time the budget wells seemed seem more dried up than in past years which is not to say that this is not a regular occurrence in in in, in the pre-seasons where it's like yeah Everyone's like, oh, we get an over, over, over hyper mega budget and like order the <laughs> discount ramen boxes. Like, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. that's that's the and then cup noodles. And then one guy picks up a, a sick dude and then it tr just like escalates and like we need more money. We need more money. And like, oh, we <laughs> in order to be competitive. But I will say there's still still some developments in this league right now that will unfortunately mean a budget decrease for sure. a sizable amount of teams, right? And I don't think that that's necessarily a bad thing. It's a symptom of a lot of past mistakes. Yeah. I think this is like the rebound year. I think going into 2023, I can I can tell you I expect, I don't know, I expect more restrictions in terms uh from the team side um on on overall roster size. Um, I think it's going to be difficult for them to necessarily like offset roster construction, roster building and facility management with like sponsorship, because again, we're still catching. We need to catch up. We need to make a lot of ground up with like the absolute jet fuel we have. That is Overwatch 2, right? We need we need to cover a lot of ground before we can really start to like bring back in and entice those sponsors. Again, doesn't surprise me that Butterfinger steps in. What I could I have told you it was Butterfinger? No, absolutely not. I would have never guessed it would be Butterfinger, but happy to have him. Um, but even from like the team aspect, like you're seeing like the crypto stuff start to be real questionable, and it's just like shit. Mm. All right, well that's not necessarily uh, safe. Maybe is the right word. Um, I, maybe the teams don't know if they're really going to see that necessarily pay off to offset some of these costs. So I think 2023 is probably going to be a, another restriction before we do really add the jet fuel to the fire and sell a lot of these 
brands, ideas, influencers, yeah. whatever it is going into 2024 where we rubber band and we start to grow again, right? I, I think yeah. that's when we start to look at, you know, maybe PVE brings people in. Again, budgets not, are, are, what I'm hearing from Yiska is that budgets aren't set. There's a, there's still more movement, but it's not, it, it's not necessarily super correlative of like all of the hype that we're getting from playoffs. Yes, all of that's very good. Yeah. Don't make no bones the the, the teams like see that this is like worth investing into but how can you sell that to investors how can you sell that to sponsorships that's where the like the money is made and that's where the, it sounds like that's where they're having to and that's so yes would you yeah go on. would you consider this like a market correction to an extent or like, i mean of course it is it, unfortunately yeah. like if you look at market trends right like they never closely mirror to to the actual performance of a product which is sort of like mm -hmm. unfortunately achievement will always like be ahead of the curve of a reward in almost mm -hmm. every field right you do your best work and then five years down the, the line you get paid yes. for it right yes um unfortunately we're we're just we might be at the top of the wave or at the start of the wave but definitely not in terms of like what, what we can expect in terms of the gotcha. income um I'm concerned that this hurts our amplitude of the wave that we could create. I feel like we might be siphoning a bit. And this is this is something I'll probably have a little bit more on. I think if if you look at the scope of this endeavor that we're taking, the type sure. of shortcuts we've taken um, in, in terms of like what, what kind of content we do, what, what kind of people we hire, what kind of... Um, environments we allow for teams and then also looking into like future monetization opportunities i, I just wish we had more and I, I think that's where we probably I, i'm concerned that while it is true for the mar current market correction it's not the optimal it's not value optimization even though i understand that at this point like if i was to be let's say i'm i'm an owner and I have finite mm. resources, and someone tells me, "Well, oh, did you see the the uh, viewership and whatnot?" Like, oh, Pog, like, have confidence in this product. <laughs> now we're popping off. No, now I want to see the money. Show me the money, yes. and then I can. That's, that's the <laughs> show me the Give fucking me money. My money, right? Give me my so, um, but let me let me pose you a, 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 a like a financial like wet dream, and you tell me if if you're the GM for the fucking uh, the 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 berlin bear huggers that you aren't necessarily berlin bratwurst sure the berlin bratwurst <laughs> however you want to however you want to go with that right we get it we get an exclusive deal with twitch right which doesn't sound like it's completely you know out of the woodwork doesn't sound like twitch is doing so hot we have like an exciting it, product I, the reason why why, why we might believe that is because for cdl they are some weak i would say but there are some are reasons whispers. to believe that CDL is on Twitch, right? Okay. With sponsorship activations and whatnot, right? So would they not package both together? I mean, or, they did or all the, Activision. Exactly. Exactly what they did with the well, YouTube deal, deal back yeah, for yeah. Twitch. Yeah. And then of course, like one, one thing we also have to always evaluate into this current situation is the Microsoft deal, right? So yeah, yeah. of course. Well, like this so, is also another uncertainty thing. Like I, I think that's if it, once again, if I'm an owner, the actual owner of the company that I'm in business with is not doesn't have the reins yet to decide. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. okay, Pog, like the, sure. the viewership is up. Let me invest into my <laughs> brand. And then Microsoft's like, you know, we actually don't want to be the company that does esports. So, <laughs> you know, like that's that's yeah. also probably a, re a reason to like not be too high on this uh, situation right now. But I, I still think it's unfortunate that we're in that position. I, I hope that this is something that we really have to figure out in this year. Is I think I hope we keep the viewership incentives. I yes. think at some point, yep. my gut Actually, feeling is drop. Some, some someone at Blizzard will find out just how much value they are losing by offering these viewership incentives. Because you have to think that whoever is watching this does it for skins that a fraction of those would eventually buy it. And whatever value you or buy a skin instead, right? Maybe sure. maybe not an Overwatch League skin. 
So basically, by offering this viewership incentive, yes, you're not technically, you know, spending any money because the distribution is basically solved and like all you're really investing is like the skin creation there and whatnot. But you gotta think that this is going to take away like this. Yeah, Eric said it like some cannibalization of you know someone that wants a skin and maybe doesn't want to play the vanilla skin for their newly uh, uh, yeah. created like of those free to play players. They'll just get the owl skins and then mm -hmm. eventually we'll find out. Moment, uh, wait a second, like in a similar sense that we believe like the Twitch primes will eventually run out, right? Like that. Mm -hmm. That's Amazon pumping money into Twitch, which is always like some sub money to the creators, right? Yeah. In the same sense, I could see that being the case for owl skins, and we'll either don't have, um, we, we don't get that... enough new stuff that is interesting for those p players, sure. or like we, we turn down the incentives at some point, and then our viewership necessarily drip dips, right? Is, it, is that not just like a correction of esports as a whole? Because again, like we mentioned in the show a little bit earlier, like this isn't an Overwatch problem. This is like an esports yeah. problem where a lot of the viewership, like it or not, is based around viewership incentives. I, I'm However done. you want to put yeah. that. Like also if everybody dips, then well. are we really, you know, at, at a risk? Coast also is like a big thing that we have to probably consider. Yes, yeah. I think that that's another, that's another Pandora's box for another day that like, yeah. Overwatch is is late too. It could be successful. We don't really know. Even if like the, I, I think the spearhead of that campaign probably you have to look at Riot as being the 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 success story there. But I don't know how that's necessarily gone from them. I have to assume it's like okay, but mm -hmm. there's there's more logistics to that than I think people necessarily lot on and going like, oh well, they just get a product and it's real good and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All, all, all's green there. It's like, eh, well, you've heard some industry, you know, professionals talk about, you know, there's some, you know, you can understand why you wouldn't want CoStreams to be as successful as your main product. Definitely is, uh, isn't, isn't as binary as people might make it out yeah. to seem. Um, that said, Jessica, any, any further thing with the poll or not the playoffs, but the, uh, the off season okay. coming in? The, anything you want to get into there? Here's, here's a big problem. I yeah. sense that there's an uncertainty of what kind of income streams we can expect. Sure. And the the problem is is like we it, it feels like and this okay, once again, like just from the outside, fo follow like what what we know so far. There is no roster construction rule article even though every season before we got it yeah. a week before grand finals. This is not out yet. We officially actually don't know that tomorrow the options window closes, right? That's usually we know that. This year we don't know that. We don't know when the minimum roster size of five or six needs to be fulfilled, right? I think that has been disclosed to teams. It hasn't been disclosed to the public. That's probably for some reason. And it feels like there's something that's not figured out yet that could move a couple of you know, levers here and there that could, you know, make the situation better or worse. But unfortunately, I really, I, I think it's a problem that the delay happened. And I, I think there's, there sure. are worlds where, you know, business takes time and unfortunately it can't be right now, but it will result in, in a lot of options not being picked up. Like we saw, for instance, uh, Outlaws before uh, dropped Lab, uh, Doge yep. and Creative. Creative, Creative yeah. Um, creative probably being the, like the m most surprising one. I expect a, a bunch of options not to be picked up. Also, hmm. quite interestingly, there will probably be there are a couple of players that I thought were an option and aren't an option. So that's going to be interesting in terms of what it does. There is a world where we have a market correction and whether salaries are inflated and uh, this sort of brings about a different situation. I I hope. Okay, so my ilk, you know, the, the elitist kind that likes three top teams to gobble up all the talent, just go, <laughs> like, play 20% of the matches against each other. You, well, it, has I'm to, like, it has to be likely be happening. I'm, I'm Poggin. You won't be Poggin if you like parody, as it stands right now. Because See, 
what I, what I if, think, I think in the short term, people are going to be pogging because what I'm hearing from you is that this is what it sounds like you're expecting a pretty bloody off season, a lot of, yeah. lot of movement. And I think that's really exciting for a lot of people. I think people right. love roster apocalypse. Yes. Love that shit. They'll eat up roster apocalypse, yes, which is great. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if like, once again, this is all, I say this now. I also know historically that the way it feels right now is only slightly un unprecedented. It's always sure. like, it seems one way, then some dude throws, you know, an yeah. exorbitant amount of on a main support and suddenly all the chips fall and everyone's going crazy and like we yeah. once again have inflated salaries. Uh, right. Totally possible that this is something that's happening. There are also, unfortunately, stories of regression in terms of like wh what some sure. teams might be able to s financially support um which which makes sense with all yeah. the context that we've kind of been given um around you know the difficulty of monetization from the league and the team side it makes sense however i think there is still a lot of hope when you look at the numbers when you look that we still haven't gotten yeah. pbe yet right like that's that's True. going to do something for the game Based. which will and trickle getting, over to our you know neck of the woods right and like we're getting if, new heroes like quickly yeah. yeah. Like Speaking of, we'll we'll quick. get to Ramatra, folks. Don't worry. We'll we'll get to some some viewpoints on there. Um, but I know Yeski, you brought up Lip Doge and Creative. Hit hit me with some takes there. I I didn't expect Creative to go, but the other two felt kind of like a long time coming. Yes or no? I think that was going to happen. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think I think Lip should be in Overwatch League. I'll, I'll say and Doge as well. I think they both are probably at that level. But probably for different teams, more Vancouver than anything yes, else, right? Yes. But I, I, I actually think Lep is permanently underrated, and I thought that there were moments where I think he showed how good he was on Lucio during the Junker Queen meta on Houston. Houston didn't perform too terribly well, but the series that they won against the Glads, granted it was Glads during Junker Queen, but at the time yeah. we didn't really know that they were that bad. Like Lep performed very well, and like based on what I know from Lep personally and like his journey through Contenders, I think he's definitely. Uh, should be up there. Doge, I don't know as much about, but everything I hear about him is very good. Uh, and creative, like, I just don't get creative. No. I mean, I get it to an extent. Yeah. But like, I, it was a gamble. I, it it was creative's fine. Not gonna, yeah, creatives it probably won't be searching for a long time. For yeah. Well, you say that. I don't know. Um, I hope not. I mean, creative yeah. should, like, be on a team, I think. We'll see. I think I think there's worlds where it could fall through the cracks. Not necessarily based on skill, but I think also based on some skill. Where it's I like, think it's a mistake if he, if he's done it. Uh, okay, let me let me pose you this this world where like, uh, give me like, give me Vancouver and NYXL go fully Western. There, you, you're promoting more rookie talent, both for these Western level. teams and Korean teams coming up. There are just, there could be more competitive flex supports coming in. Maybe there's some free agents that you want to sign. Do you want to rest your laurels on the creative train? It's not that he's bad, but like, is that who you're chasing after? I would probably say no, right? I like, mean, it you play on, on a good you value. How much do you value Overwatch League experience? Like that's the other. Yeah, there's some intangibles there that you have to you have to evaluate for sure. But I think I, think I don't think it's a shoe in. No, I don't think it's a shoe in, but I think he should be. I, I, mm. I think he should be. Not that he is going. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah, for me, when you have when you sign Lep and Doge and you literally don't ever play them, it felt like pretty obvious that you aren't necessarily going forward with them much farther. That one felt very Junker Queen meta. Yeah. Yes. Fine. It sucks. I'm sure they will probably land on their feet. Um, again, a lot of teams doing a lot of different things. Uh, I expect them to probably find some homes. Uh, Kenobi, any other thoughts on uh, Lipdoge Creative? No, I, I gave mine. I think they should all probably be in the last point. Uh, another some news coming out of Boston. Um, obviously, uh, Mineral being out, 
they've been in need of a GM, Askoff being let go. Uh, I think it dropped today that Pre is going to be heading up Boston's 2023 affairs. Any thoughts there? I generally consider Pre to be a very competent GM from what I've been able to gather from, you know, outside. Okay. I think um it, they're like he definitely needs to perform <laughs> right it's like uh he needs to and i think he's he's now like he he's probably has enough of enough time to at least establish something because like one thing that i learned and i think that everyone should recognize is that championship winning teams are not built in one season anymore in this league yeah you need a system that you need to create a funnel and then eventually you can eat. Rush, Element Mystic, three years, four years down the line, you can win a Champions League, a championship. Shock are building it with O2. Krusty, always very active in contenders, finds these guys, gets the top talent for not top dollar, right? Moon, Team CC stuff. The, the sure. whole, like, fate pre-established stuff going all the way back to apex those uh, establishing facts always bringing back players that he has worked with this is it's now a systematic funnel that you need to create in order to be a, an absolute top team and more so than you know an improvement in performance which i think you absolutely have to expect from boston uh, mm -hmm. otherwise it's probably going to be not a success but more so as a boston fan i'd be i'd be interested to see are they building a funnel that could eventually lead to uh, wins? And if not, right. that's then when I, I, I get uh, skeptical. But other than that, yeah, we'll see. Is it wrong to assume that their funnel initially, when you look at year one, year two, was to, you know, create Huck's little bazaar, flip some players, create some turnover, find a couple you know, mainstay diamonds Boston pieces. Right. Yeah, diamonds. Um, and then it felt like three, four, five was the years that, you know, Boston really tried to like make playoff aspirations and they really didn't seem to land. Is there a world where, and I know maybe Kenobi, you can kind of speak to this a little bit more. Um, I, I think there was some recent news with Boston and uh, their academy team kind of, you know, going dark for a little bit. Is there a world where, in a very London-esque fashion that, you know, this pipeline begins in your, you know, going into 2023 yeah. and you start to see Boston kind of recuperate and and make some some future playoff aspirations in this growing year. Yeah, I believe in the press release they said they'd be back in for Uprising. Uh, and again, I believe in Uprising Academy in the press release, they did say that they were going to come back um, in 2023. Mm. Uh, it was just for this season. Uh, they had okay. really good talent. Like I thought that Arrow and Simple were like really good. Um, they were still because I remember Arrow put out his LFT and they're like, oh yeah, I'm still contracted with the Boston. Simple is also still contracted with Boston. I think they there's a potential that they keep them, but Arrow did put LFT out, so sure. I don't know how that contract. Is. I think Simple should like very just should be on Boston right now. Um unless they're going to be able to get a bag for him. Um, I think he's playing in Korea right now for, like, Starlight. Um, but I think for... I think having an academy team, it'll be interesting because there's not that many. Yeah. Um, O2 is the one where it's, like, it's, like, more of a partnership. O2's been its thing, but, like, you know, Team CC doesn't exist anymore. Uh, yeah. Guangzhou have theirs uh, playing in Korea. T1 still exists. But beyond yeah. that, there's not a lot. Like, I think that... I wonder if this like new, you know, resurgence in viewership and resurgence and all that stuff brings some academy teams back into the probably not. Um, I mean, yeah. if we're talking about like roster restrictions and and budgets not necessarily being decided, it, we sure as hell yeah. can't necessarily look at you know uh, yeah. contenders being a place where we can spend money. 
I think I think people want to come back. I think it's very clear that like there is interest in creating this because people are recognizing that there is like intangible value in yeah, creating this, having, but it's like we don't have yeah, money. It's, it's it's obviously yeah, it's like a monetary thing and it always will be. Yeah, yeah. But like having that funnel is like we a lot of the players that we get from like that are the best players that we've had recently are from like Yeah, you don't have are, London without Yeah, you don't have London without Hurricane, you don't have fearless in dallas without team cc sure. you don't have uh dallas without element mystic like a lot of these teams or it's just like yeah mm -hmm. they, they've been they've been on the come up from contenders and um i think there are still teams like that they're just not affiliated with like odyssey yes. for instance i think is a team where it's like you can probably pluck any player from there and be totally good for like the next like two or three um sure but yeah i'll be interested to see what pre does with uh uprising academy and how that's going to work out yeah, ditto. I think he's definitely. I think he has strong ideas. Um, it's it's very interesting to see what he does with Boston because the the groundwork for this team uh, seems very odd. Uh, I said as much in the preseason that uh, they very very quickly could just become a fully Korean team, and we saw that for a little bit, and then we stopped seeing it, and then we saw that for a little bit, and then we stopped seeing it. Um, so I think again. Ray kind of stands at a crossroads. I think he can do a lot depending on like what the contract structure looks for this team as a whole, like whose options are up, who's still under contract. You know, do you still have the UA guys under under your thumb? If you do, do you, you know, can you bring them up? Is that more feasible? Um, obviously, COVID is like much fee more feasible to kind of work around. So the idea of having a fully Korean team is definitely still on the table. Um, yeah, I'm. I think this is a move to be excited about if you're a Boston Uprising fan. I, I trust that Pre is going to be able to do some 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 real good things. I think. I think he's. Uh, I I can't say that I've ever spoken to him, and I might have to reach out and say hello. But I trust Yeska enough to know who's who's yeah. a good seed and who's a bad seed. So uh, another kind of little bit surprising one for some people: uh, Vancouver to pay out after kind of coming in and. Having quite a uh, quite a season resurgence for the Vancouver Titans. Uh, did this kind of catch you guys sideways, Kenobi? Does this is this a little weird for you? I don't know what Vancouver is doing. <laughs> I just I just I have no idea. Like yeah, uh, sure. not that I not that they're like I have no idea what they're doing in terms of like this is stupid, but I just don't know like what the what the plans are from like the top down up, right? Where it's like mm -hmm. I think is a very good coach, and I think he most likely will land back on his feet somewhere in some type of coaching position. But this feels like vancouver might just completely restructure or restructure next season um uh i know masa did retire yeah that's one that happened and i i think they would be smart to like keep some of their pieces like aspire for instance i think yeah. it's definitely someone who is pretty valuable uh to that team but i just i don't know what the direction is of the vancouver titans going forward and probably yeah. when we get more insight into like if there is a new head coach, you know, new like how the new staff looks, that's probably where we find start to figure out like what the direction is for that team. Is uh is is Gunba still under salary? I thought I saw that he was tweeting some something. Is that that's a Yiska question? What the, what's Yiska? the question? Is Yiska or is Gunba still under contract with Florida or is he LFT? He's uh in negotiation with Florida, I think. Okay. So what what okay. the the tweet said. I don't have any more insight there. Gotcha, gotcha. The yeah, yeah. I think um, <laughs> that would be somebody to keep your eye on. I think there's there's some interesting connections there uh, at Vancouver with Broy at the head. Um, obviously, friend of the show. Uh, Yeska is Depay's exit something to worry about with Vancouver Titans or something to be excited about for the future? I think it's important to realize that there's a new GM for the Vancouver Titans yep. that didn't have right. the uh, the ability to have a choice in that uh, coach. I think you yep. necessarily have to evaluate the... You, you can't see this in a vacuum before you see whatever the Roy picks up. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, if if you pick up a Korean coach, then that communicates you want a Korean roster, and then like it, it changes the entire outlook, right? Mm -hmm. If you... If you have someone what is else, Baroy cooking. What is right? He... I think I think they are maybe a little bit more of a leak here, but I think you, we will see 
a bunch of assistant coaches try to have similar success as uh, Christopher did, you know, stepping from the assistant coach into the main co uh, head coach position. And a lot of successful coaching staffs might, you know, thin out a little bit as people try to step into these head coach positions, right? And to try to, like, apply themselves there. So... Maybe this. Can I just do wild speculation on who who I think you're referencing and dancing around the wildly bus? speculate? I'm gonna wildly so. speculate. Okay, I'm stone facing because I think I think this is somebody who's been like I I have called every year as somebody who like needs to be in charge of a team like tomorrow. I don't know him from anybody else, but with how successful how how much success he's been around and how long he's been in the scene, I think Casaurus is probably deserving of at least a a franchise under his thumb right um i i think a lot of what you're saying kind of fits the bill for him where it's like okay well we've seen we've seen assistants get promoted it's about damn time we start to see more assistants get promoted you've been around crusty you've been around success you know what success looks like you've come from contenders you've been successful there why not take a shot why not take a chance obviously face was very successful this year I think Casaurus, if he wants to, again, it's difficult to leave the San Francisco shock, but if you have the aspirations to lead your team, influence your vision to, you know, do things under your system or create a system for, you know, your vision of the game, I, I think it's, I think it's very, very uh, clear um, to me, at least, that he's one of the names on that short list that definitely could be promoted um, for a team like Vancouver. We'll see. I don't know nothing, but I think I will widely speculate in that area. Um, anybody else? Final thoughts with Vancouver? Mm, we'll see. I think like they they have a couple of avenues. Of course, like yeah. um, yeah. I I think like I'm not sure what the budget situation is at Vancouver. Um, but maybe like yeah, I think more teams should be able to get some good value pickups. I think they sure. already have some some good pieces, especially Aspire. Aspire's Oh yeah, so I think good. Aspire is is worth his weight in gold right now. Yes. And outside of that, if I'm gonna be completely honest with you, I don't know if I want anybody else. I think Mirror is an interesting piece to hold on to or at least to consider, but everything else I'm like eh. Do I want to keep Aztec? Maybe. Probably not. Depends on like what else is on the market. I don't think anybody else is a lock other than Aspire, to be completely honest with you. Yeah. I don't just I think this is yeah. this is like a brand new team coming into next year. Um and I think it's probably for the best. Right? I think, I you think install you install new GM, they install their people, and you have a coach that's like, okay, well I have to you know, I have Aspire that I have to consider, but like everybody else is like a free pick. Okay, cool. Like that, I could that's to see me seems good. I could even see a ton of their players dropping into free agency and not necessarily forever being gone, but like, mm -hmm. sure, you know, like a smart GM probably realizes that the market situation for these bottom tier teams is now a little bit different and they don't have to yep. pay certain amounts anymore. Um, and also, once again, keep in mind, those contract structures are not Baroy's. Um, yes. So like there's some incentive for a new GM to come in and like reevaluate the cost spending and whatnot. And that's true for every single new GM. I think that the same is true probably for Pre, who uh, might also, you know, reconsider who's being dropped. I could see, like, uh, even them going for a full Korean route. Um, so I, I think, generally speaking, we got to, you, you got to, you can't evaluate the meal based on one ingredient. Right? Exactly. Yep. Agreed. Unless it's Brussels sprouts, get that shit out of here. <laughs> oh no, you're wrong for that. <laughs> I've never had Brussels sprouts, funnily enough. Uh, any I, other the, the smell any is just the word. movement that uh, is excitable? Obviously, there's some some early talk about Void maybe being absent. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna wait for official confirmation there. I'm uh, really interested in what Shanghai is gonna do because, well, okay, besides signing, besides throw around a whole lot of money, sign Choice One, sign someone. <laughs> nah, someone. I'm telling you, I'm gonna wildly speculate again. If you're telling me that you have proper, you have Violet, you have Finn, let's say you want to keep Striker and you need a Korean main tank that can speak English, there is exactly 
two people in the world that you can afford. That's Smurf, and you're probably not necessarily going to wrestle him away from Soul. And there's someone. Who do you think you're going to? Who, who do you, you think you're going to purchase? You, you know what I think is going to happen here. Uh, What's that? This is just my my. I got to get some ch sort of Chinese talk on this uh -huh. podcast. Uh, Leave is going to go to Spark. Probably, yeah. Mm. I can see that. And Spark. I'm not going to put faith in them, obviously, because it's Spark, so, like, whatever. But, like, if that DPS line is leaving shy, fucking wrap it up, bro. I mean, I mean that's, like, that's like fantasy World Cup. Like, I literally just, like, I, I don't think you should. It's, like, just, just yeah, that's, that's fucking nuts. wrap it up, bro. They're going to be very good until they eventually are not very good and they just, like, shit the bed for, like, 14 straight games. But, like, you know. There's there's yeah. worlds where you can make Spark, and I think this has been a long time coming in a narrative that Kenobi specifically has been like parroting for a while. Is like you can make Spark a fully Chinese team, and they're probably way more successful. It's very clear they have the money for it, and they it's do. like the anime money from Billy Billy. Whew. They they have the money for it. They have the the infrastructure for it in terms of like players on their team. You have super rich. You have Gusha, you have Pineapple, who I think is like a little slept on, is a useful role player, and Shy, who he probably doesn't, you know, get benched ever. So like, if you add in Leave, they're, you're only a couple pieces away from just being fully Chinese, and at that point, you're probably going to be more successful long term, more consistent. But you've got a whole lot of players left to just like toss around to the highest bidder that are, you know, yeah. alpha Yi, you know, people of these natures. So I. Definitely possible. I have an inflammatory take. Once again, zero juice. Just okay. Like, uh, really, zero juice. Here is my plea to Krusty. Because you hold the faker moment in your hands. And I implore <laughs> you, let go of the training weights that is having to sign American players. Please, I beg you. <laughs> get him. Oh, yeah. Get him out. Sign Max. That's fine. Get get someone instead if you can. Yeah, uh, like he's saying. I mean, they're gonna get he saying. Get he saying, and then Finn. Don't don't do it. Don't don't load up on a player that's just you know either like not going to have that potential. You you mm -hmm. got the you got the golden egg. You you can't just like. I think waste keep it. Kaluge. I think they keep they they should keep collusion. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be real with you for a moment. If they're if they're gonna sign Max, they should keep Kaluge. Like they should keep their off tank player. Yeah, and <sighs> the, yeah, I and don't. then get Nevix. Yeah, yeah. Unironically, like good enough to start, but not on this team. It's not. Kaluge yeah. is good enough. Kaluge would be good enough to start on on most off tanks. I would say, like skill wise, probably. But how how much longer are we gonna like torture the shock into playing with the one english speaker no i mean yeah, they won you two are you are hurting it. yourself <laughs> they won two championships with some of the most talented roster like the talent yeah, yeah, dense yeah. rosters that we've ever seen yes along yes, yes. with a coach that was ahead of his time like yeah of course they did it then but like we gotta stop. With this. I mean, you like, can't, but I, I think that I think that unless you are a unicorn, I think that playing solo tank is 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 not good. I think you need no, to no, obviously, one hundred percent. But like, even and I don't know same... if there's, I, is there any other like other tank that's like not Kaluj, who's like in the system already and seems to have good rapport with the other players. Like, are you really going to get anyone that's better? Super. At a... Yeah. <laughs> Who? Super. Super. Uh, maybe yeah, okay. well, that would be that would be funny. <laughs> that would be interesting. It'd probably help a lot. I mean, it'd be yeah. um, fuck it. But if that's where we're going, then like I, just... I genuinely don't even know. I I I don't I don't know if that actually would. on paper it seems like it would, but I don't know how that works. I mean, I think I think Iska's right. They should just sign a lot of the O2 talent and just get yeah, it go fully Korean. Adopt what I've been trying to parrot forever. Like, single language in this game is superior, unless you are, like, meticulous in who you're acquiring, Yeah, <laughs> both from the coaching staff and from the player side. You don't need another Valiant from Season 1. Those who know know. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Um, so what if they sign Top Dragon? Ha. Betty White, shout out. I, I, I don't think, I don't think they need him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something tells me they don't need him. I don't know why him. I keep thinking Top Dragon is a tank, but he's just not. Nope. I um, also... Yeah? 
drop kilo. Yeah, he's gotta go. No, he's my go. boy, he's so. He can have he can have a renaissance on some mid tier team. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that's let him really. let him join New York and replace their captain Flora, <laughs> and he'll be great. Um, <sighs> no, yeah, Chuck probably needs to drop a couple couple people, but regardless, um. Before we exit, I feel like it would be remiss to not give some sloppy toppy to the newest hero. Speaking of top dragon, right? Um, Ramatra is now in the well. I guess not now, but um, is the newest Overwatch hero. I will hope. Thoughts, opinions. Apparently, Iska's been on his hand fetish shit again. So there's that. Why? He's sick as fuck. Like I, oh. honestly, like. He he looks very his his origin story thing was like very good. It was like yeah. the, it's the best one that I think they've made since the Sigma one because I think the Sigma one's probably the yes. best one they've ever made. And this was that's like the, very that close I would to say that. that's the most like artistic one that's kind of challenged what Overwatch is, and it's not just like boy howdy we're just yeah. gonna save the world and it's like yeah. oh, oh yeah, this yeah. is a little bit more gritty this is a little bit more dark there's some there's some depths to this it's not just you know superman versus you know yeah the, the single one was like so fucking good and i think that's like the pinnacle of what we yeah. have for like hero teasers this was like a close second i think this is like very good it's a good um it's a good tie-in to like hopefully because i think they said that like Ramatra's head of like Null Sector and Null Sector's like the the big baddie Omnix. I don't fucking know. So probably, I, well, I, I I know a little bit about the lore. Um, Hell yeah! But he he looks at least from like that perspective of the lore. Ten out of ten, A plus. Sound design on the trailer, fucking sick. Super Voice, sick. Fucking sick. If he's gonna be fucking hanging around with Z- Zenyatta, fucking sick. Because we don't get Zenyatta lore. Uh. The fact that we learned that Omnics are like finite and they don't like ever reproduce, fucking sick. Uh, that's cool. Which and then, I mean, okay, pause there for a second. Is that like news to anybody? I don't know. I I didn't. Is know that, that is that did that blow off anybody's socks? That's like no shit. The robots don't reproduce. How would well, they? Well, I well they can't make anymore. That's the thing. Oh well, yeah. <gasps> like I mean, you can isn't that like just, the whole bad can, thing? Well, no, like, you can usually like Omnix bad robots. boo. Yeah, but like usually, I mean, usually you can just make more, but you can, I guess, for um, huh. I guess you're just not somehow. I think that's gonna get uh, uh question anyway. In terms of like what they, they've they like shown, like some like very mm-hmm. basic screens in like an article, yeah, his like his nemesis form, where I guess he's just uh, he fucking what's the demon hunter thing that they do, Joe? They met, oh, up. they metamorphosis, yeah, it's <laughs> basically just that. Looks cool. I like that he has a fucking staff. Yeah, it'll be interesting because it sounds like early reports are that he has like two modes. He's Omnic Jesus. Uh, aren't great. I'm a little worried when it comes to multiple mode characters, uh, but obviously details are the devil. Um, looks cool, though. We'll, we'll echo that point. Looks super sick. The arena was very, very excited. When uh, that happened, the statue that they have looks very cool. So cool. Um, again, it's it's another one of those shot in the arms that we've had we've been we've been waiting for for a long time. Is you know this uptick of content, right? <clears throat> and to see you know that not only does it still have that same Blizzard quality polish, but it, it looks really really cool. And hopefully, it's super fun to play. Uh, Yiska, any any thoughts from the online viewer perspective? Were you excited? Was it was it cool? I mean, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. kind of new, <laughs> um, as you can, as you might be able to tell by me yeah, having yeah, yeah. one of the worst puns in Overwatch history, possibly, with Ra and then uh, yeah, Mr. Matt, X uh, in the middle. Yeah, and then... I I'm not gonna lie, I, that went that right one. over my head. I was like, huh? I saw it, I saw it the first time, and then I was like, oh, and then I saw it like after he got renounced. I was like. Oh, I hate Yiska. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, but yeah, uh, the origin stories, I, I I vibe with it. Like, that's just mm-hmm. a cool one. I generally like the the idea. Like, I, I like Omni characters more than sure. probably just about any uh, regular Overwatch character. Um, vibe with Zen a lot and um, definitely like... And Ramata. Bastion. You love Bastion. You, you only play uh, Bastion, That's right? a basic... 
basic ass bitch. I don't know. Like <laughs> no personality. Um I also didn't you don't like, like when it beeps. I also, beeps? Yeah, I, d- I, I didn't even is like Arisa the shot. Is or That's a great Oh question. yeah, she is. No, she is because she's like a recommissioned uh Right. Ah, right, right, right. O- right yeah, OR15, yeah. I think it was yeah. what they're called. Mm. I think Why do I know that? <laughs> yeah, I think um the origin story is really cool. I think the design is pog. Like the ideas there. Like I think like when I interviewed Gunba, he said like a lot of those characters are like over designed. I just from as a gameplay experience, I disagree. I I really like I liked the trends that um like Riot went with League in terms of like making these characters a little extra, like going fucking bonkers, especially like Felios and you know these types of characters are actually my shit. Um, yeah. So I think like having those like the two limb get it like tank mode. Um, I think the ultimate is cool. Um, yeah, I I think generally speaking, that's that's probably going to be a really interesting hero. Um, and just from a from a lore perspective and how it aesthetically looks, it's pretty nice. I will say, and this this sent me. You know, I have a, a, a thing for hands. Okay, I like if Why you follow my I? if you I follow ever. my Twitter, you already know. But apparently, it's a thing that the normal mode of Ramatra has five hands, so like you know, humanoid hands. Five fingers or four fingers and a thumb. Oh, you, you Americans differentiate between fingers and thumbs. You, you're very smart. And then, um, in the the tank mode, so the extra limbs that he can gets when nemesis mode. Get it nemesis right. Nemesis mode. Yes. Is yes, yes, nemesis. That asshole loses a finger. Yeah, because they're a different set of like. Well, it's a different it's, set it's, of it's arms. Different, yeah, it's a different set of hands. Yeah. And. Yeah. They're well, bigger. I mean, it's know. bigger. You don't. You have less use of digits. Like I don't Are know. Figure it out. Magic. Staff. Okay. Uh, why three toes? And what? Joe, what does he have two of? Eyes. No, he has more. Oh, he, does, he actually does have two eyes. Right. He has two legs. Two legs. Two arms. I guess four set. He has two sets of two. Well, okay, but. Th- he, he, uh, it must be something that's irregular, you know. Uh huh. I hate where you're going with this. I really. Just <laughs> I, 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 you're thinking it. The internet. You're doesn't. thinking it. I know yeah. what you're trying to do here, and I just. Right. I, I will not. Maybe, maybe, maybe he's a shark. Maybe okay. that's all I'm saying. Maybe, maybe there's there's some that, cork screwing. Or a stingray. We'll see. That's tactical crouch. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're you're not too far off base. Uh, <laughs> we have been going a little long in the tooth. Ramatra is exciting. We will we will go into the details when the kit gets officially released and we can really get our hands on it. Um, but uh, 269 is definitely wrapping up. But since I didn't do it last time and I do feel a little bit guilty, Kenobi, where can people find you? What's going on? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, thank you for giving me the... He reminded me at playoffs. He's like, hey, you never let me like shout out my shit. I'm like, no, oh, I was yeah, like, right. that, that was like, that was like way after. Or not way after that was like <laughs> was two days after we we filmed. Oh whatever. Oh yeah. Uh, In voice, I remember yeah. you complained loudly and were quite obnoxious about it. I yeah, did. go I on. So you promote yourself. <laughs> I was so I can't believe that Volumel just completely ghosted me in my ability. Oh, don't show my Twitter. Uh, well, okay, I guess yeah. You can at Kenobi Cast. That's my Twitter. You can find me there. Uh, Contenders is starting up again soon for NA and EU. Uh. On the 28th of November, so definitely keep a lookout for that. There's also maybe some collegiate stuff happening. I don't know. Potentially. I don't know. Uh, but yeah. Also, if you aren't watching Korean contenders right now, get the fuck on that because it... Oh, true. Uh, just always, you know, support Tier 2. Run it back. Export Tier 2. Oh, keep watching. True. Run it back. We There was actually a video, like a hype video that was in the arena, and it was really sick to, to see that. So yeah, uh, keep following contenders. I've also started writing a couple of fluff pieces about story stuff wow eric already did, did, wow eric didn't follow Ooh, me i can't believe it that's shocking. unreal exposed that's on air unreal. self-report <laughs> and, <laughs> anyway yeah uh i write a couple of story things on medium you know just here and there so if you enjoy that stuff uh go ahead and read it i wrote one about fearless yeah 
Oh, That's yeah. what I'm doing. All righty, Yiska. Outside of Rim World, I'm actually. What's on your agenda? I'm I'm kind kind of off at the moment. I'm on holiday. Oh, I'm, okay. I'm going to go some clothes shopping tomorrow, and then I'm go some clothes. I'm going to a real barber, and maybe I'll get a oh. massage, and then go for a walk. Are you gonna now, go to Turkish barber? Um, yeah, I think so. I think it's a Turkish Hell, boat. Yeah. I'm I'm going to absolutely have my eyebrows al- obliterated by a string, uh, you know, like a yarn. Oh, uh, they just like yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if you have ever, ever had it. Like they do the weird scissor thing, scissor. Hell no. Oof! Like with with a yarn, they take they put it into like a scissor form, and then they keep ripping out your eyebrows. That's uh, that's an experience. Yeah, anyone who hasn't been to a Turkish barber, if you ever get the chance to do it, it's awesome yeah uh, i mean i'm mainly going what? for the ability to form form a beard uh coherently <laughs> and mm. uh, otherwise like i'll be back next week what i want to do in this off season is as far as it's possible i a want to interview players that have been released into a uh, free agency free agency that want to talk about their past season and want to talk about their new season and sort of like maybe frame a little bit uh, the narrative that they experienced and I want to look into the minds of those. I want to, and there's there's some conflict of interest for the um, for the GMs there. They probably don't want to give away their hand, especially early in the off season. But eventually, we'll have GM interviews. Just give you an insight. What what are the the factors in building these rosters as they're coming up? Of course, like uh, I'll try to continue doing the roster reporting, as in like X has joined X team. Um, and here are a couple of anonymous comments from the new team as to why we jo- uh, they uh, we signed them, as far as that's possible. Um, and yeah, there's there's a couple of other things I'm working on. But yeah, like, you know, like a busy, busy end of the year, for sure. Fair play. All righty. I think that's going to be it from us. Whoa, 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 whoa. What about you, Joe? Where can people find you? Where can people direct- find me? If you want flowery garbage written. Uh, check out my Twitter. That's if not, not that's cool. It's Don't care. Good. Damn. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, you should love yeah. yourself more. I trust me. I do. Don't worry. Um, yeah. When? What's How what's often? what's there more to say? Where? Uh, that's no, that's for you to never find out, and for the folks at home to also never find out. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, Grand finals was fun. Uh, I'm bored as shit. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, we're gonna do some stuff. We'll figure it out. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for me. Um, 270 coming in. We're going to do some contender stuff sooner or later. Um, so if you're into that, stay tuned. So yeah, uh, love your faces. Thanks for supporting the show. Go download us on iTunes. Apparently that helps out a lot. Go do that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Shout out to the Patreon subs. Shout out to the YouTube our partner members, whatever the hell they call you <laughs> these days. Uh, thank you for supporting the show. Um, and we'll see you in 270. Good night. Peace.